Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting April 17th, 2019 at 5.05 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Uh, we'd like to start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And just so everyone knows that this meeting is being recorded, um, first item on our agenda is to approve the minutes from March 27th, 2019. I make that motion. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next item on our agenda is we have um, a scheduled hearing appearance from uh, Mr. Dave Prickett from uh, Dave Prickett Consulting LLC to give us an update on the uh, sewage treatment plant and infrastructure going forward. So why don't you guys come up to the table? Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. Just one page or no, it's not there. Yeah. Thank Thanks. <laughs> I know. I if we I can kind of go old school, as long yeah. as the people can see it. Oh. Dave, before we get started, I, I have a couple of questions if yes, you don't Mr. mind. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, in our contract that was signed on July uh, 27th of this year, uh, according to your schedule, uh, the anticipated completion date of task one was going to be in August. Uh, task B was September, task C, October, and task D in November. And then I saw a correspondence to our town administrator, Wendy Foxman, saying, um, and it was about the USDA funding application, and it says that uh, it's dated December 3rd, and it says that you had recently completed the wastewater condition assessment and needs analysis project. I'm wondering why did it take until the end of March for us to get it? So we'd have a chance to review it and discuss this. With regard to the draft report? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess first off on the front end, the, the project did get a later start than we'd all hoped for. Yeah. It, uh, it took a couple months to get through the contract process with the town, so by the time that was executed, the schedule that was in the project was, was old, per se. Um, I think the first milestone that we were really trying to hit was um, you guys were, were emphatic that we needed to make sure that we had preliminary recommendations in place to align with the capital and budget planning process. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, we hustled like heck to get things done for that October meeting. Um, and after that October meeting, when we'd kind of been able to present that initial four phase plan, um, from that point, you know, some of the shift had, some of the focus had shifted to the USDA application. Um, we, uh, we did deliver the draft report later than we had all hoped for. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody here on our team would would acknowledge that we didn't. Um, there were some, you know, some changes that, that happened along the way and you adjust as best you can. Um, again, I think, you know, we hustled as best we could to compress, you know, five months of work into about six, seven weeks. Um, but yeah, I mean, we would have liked to deliver the report a little bit sooner, that's, that's fair. Okay. And, and the reason I, I, I bring that up is because because of the lack of time that we had to review this, there's a lot of un, unanswered questions and it really puts us as sewer commissioners in a, in a bind because it's like, you know, how do we, you know, go forward, you know, so quickly? Uh, we're going to be asking people to spend an awful lot of money and we don't have a clear plan and, and nothing that we've had an organized uh, discussion about. So I, I just wanted to get that out there. Well, um, so hopefully we'll, we can get through as much as we can together this evening. Um, yeah, okay. I will say that I was pleased that the first cut in October, um, we're really standing about the same place. Um, at the suggestion of some town staff, and um, I don't know whether elected or appointed officials have commented about, you know, we've shifted phases one and three around into a slightly different organization. 
the overall recommendations are really very similar to what they were in October, and, and that's always a good thing, um, at least in our eyes, because that's not always the case. So, but let's see what we can get through together, and um, we acknowledge we're not perfect. We could always improve on, on execution, and uh, we just want to continue to try to work with you and do as best a job as we can for Deerfield. So I respect right. those comments. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Go ahead. Any, any other questions, good. Mr. Chairman? No, no okay. I'm good. All right. Go so we came prepared tonight to give a slightly expanded version of the proposed presentation for the annual town meeting. And the reason we did that is there's clearly the, 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 the board of selectmen, the select board, as well as m many of the members of the public that are here this evening are clearly detailed people. Um, so we're here. We wanted to go through all that. But our goal is after this meeting, subsequent to any other workshops or discussions prior to your, your meeting on the 29th, is to pare this down to more of the Reader's Digest version uh, for the public at that meeting. Nobody wants to see a dog and pony show that night with however many Warren articles you have. So mm -hmm. with that, let's, uh, let's jump into a presentation and then we'll go through as much Q QA uh, question and answer as we can. Okay. James is gonna run the clicker. Uh, just as a point of record, uh, Tony DeSimone and James Rivers are, are joining me both from DPC Engineering this evening. Okay. The, uh, the, the board there is a little tough to read. There, is, there are plenty of copies of the handouts for members of the public that might need one. I'll put extra copies on the side of the table, um, but we'll just kind of flip no, through. And cool. Would you mind if I just slide that a little if, bit if more? If you have a way to I'm kill that light a little bit, that's great. We forgot it was gonna still be light. Well, we're used to doing this at seven o'clock and it's dark yeah. out. Fusion is a great thing. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's, Kip, that's, that's really good. That's out of the... I, I want to make sure people at home can see this. You might have to lift it over that. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's, that's really a lot better for people to see, I'm sure, on TV. Thank you. OK, excellent. So this presentation this evening will cover a few things. We'll provide a, a little bit of an update from the last time we did this as a full presentation in October. Um, we'll talk about the up, updated prioritization and phasing concept. Some of you have heard about this, others have not. Uh, we'll discuss the ante anticipated implementation plan as it stands now. Talk about our best guess as to what we think the, the most realistic funding and finance alternatives are for the town of Deerfield at this point in time. And lastly, we'll go into as much Q&A as we have a chance for. So just in terms of a project update, um, we had been talking about South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility. That is the overall crux of the conversation this evening, upgrades to that facility. Uh, last month, the residents of Deerfield uh, voted to authorize a million dollars in funds to replace the clarifier uh, mechanism in the loan existing secondary clarifier at that plant. Um, we did want to note tonight that in just in the interest of trying to keep that schedule moving, uh, and that is aggressive, uh, Tony and the team put together a draft set of plans for the clarifier project. So um, right. we've tried to make up some lost time um, Thank you. To, uh, to keep everything on track. So we are still very well on track with that project. Could I just interrupt you two seconds? Um, so you're keeping DEP in the loop so that they know that we're... We, we speak with Dan Karpaska regularly. Okay. So he so has I not finalized the... Um, I guess I'd call it the updated or new uh, administrative order. And, and that's a good thing because, you know, when we started three months ago, we were anticipating, you know, March, and, and he's basically said just give us the date. So we've got some um, proposed contract language to try to work out with the town, and subject to finalization of that, then we can put everything okay. in place Perfect. relative to the schedule. So I just wanted to make sure great. that they knew that we were moving, at, you know, or working with you. There's, to there's close dialogue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good. Thank I have you. a message on my office from, from Dan this morning, too, so I need to follow oh, okay. up with him. Thank you. Sure. So in terms of the, um, we're just referring to the project from last fall as the Wastewater Asset Management Plan. Just simple. We had a big, long title before, but that's the easiest way. As uh, Kip pointed out, uh, we did just recently get the draft report uh, to the town and members of the public in late March. Um, we did issue addendum number one. Um, which was basically a replacement of Appendix B in that report. 
um, we had a, an error in our algorithm that created the, the nice printouts of the manhole. So every manhole was off by a couple. Uh, so fortunately, uh, Bruce St. Peter's brought that to our attention. We updated Appendix B, um, including two pages of the report where the table was updated. Largely the table in the report was, was good, but there were one or two changes that James made to that. Uh, lastly, just a quick update. We did receive comments um, about a couple pages of comments today from Keith over at the plant. Um, he had gone through the report in detail. We have not had a chance to respond in writing, but Tony did have a chance to talk to Keith this afternoon and, and go through the majority of those items. And uh, Keith was pleased with where things are at and, and where they're headed. <coughs> on the on the funding application side, we did support uh, we did submit a USDA application um, in mid February. Uh, James has been the lucky guy to uh, go through and fine tune the paperwork along the way. We kind of hit USDA at a time where they were changing their process, so we got to do some things, many things twice in this application. Great. Um, but it is submitted and it has been submitted to the federal office for final underwriting. So that's, a, that's just a big step, getting through all the little dots and I's and cross and T's, um, but that's off to our, our friends in Washington. Great. So where we started last fall, and, and, um, and there, we had presented a four-phase upgrade project where we might recall um, portions of the South Deerfield plant um, and collection system were going to be upgraded in phase one, followed by a portion of the old Deerfield plant, and then back to South Deerfield for the rest of South Deerfield, and then finally in phase four, back to old Deerfield. Uh, the collection system was pre presented as a multi-year capital plan to upgrade and renew the pipes. Um, had a total projected cost of 37 million when you looked at the actual cash flow plan over what you'd spent over those 13 years. So what changed? Um, the secondary clarifier mechanism failing at the South Deerfield plant leading to the administrative consent order certainly changed some of our thinking uh, collectively. I think both the town and DPC relative to the longevity of some of the mechanical equipment at that site. Also, um, Keith had a pretty strong preference that, that he presented publicly um, that he would much let, rather see the entire South Deerfield plant upgraded um, prior to the, to the old Deerfield and, and, and address at least one of the plants. Um, obviously, a driver there being that the South Deerfield plant has a capacity to take everything from the town. So we had always been, uh, and I think we presented it at the last meeting, that either you upgrade South Deerfield plant, uh, and obviously that needs to happen, and then the question becomes, do you build a pipe and mothball Old Deerfield, or do you leave the two sections separate and do you upgrade the Old Deerfield plant? Well, that question hasn't been answered. Um, we suggest based on the cost right now, where that was at least $5 million more, um, that that be tabled in such time until you, know, you have to make that decision. Um, Economies of scale, uh, the cost difference is about $2 million uh, just in terms of doing the two phases separately or doing the two phases combined. Um, we'll present later on some of the risks as interest rates creep up in terms of what annual cost and payback might be uh, based on anticipated inflation and interest rate increases. In terms of the updated implementation plan, um, Again, the, the, the concept here is to construct pretty much everything at the South Deerfield plant comprehensive upgrade as a single project. Uh, again, the old Deerfield plant the upgrades are deferred, and then you would reevaluate the construction of a force main or upgrade at the other plant at such time as that's prudent. I think the driver there is if ever you have an opportunity to partner with a third party, whether it be a, a developer, whether that be with a new business that's looking to do something in Deerfield, that may be your best opportunity to, sh to shed some of the costs away from the, the Deerfield residents. So um, I know you've always been poised for opportunities. You should continue to seek those out. And as Carolyn would think of, if grant opportunities present themselves, whether it be mass works or something else, maybe you can strike while the iron's hot. The only other thing I'd, I just want you to keep in the back of your mind, there still is that possibility of connecting old Deerfield direct to um, Greenfield. I mean, the mayor and I have kept that door kind of open um, if there's grant opportunities An for that. An intermunicipal opportunity. Yeah. Certainly all, all, all alternatives should be kept on the table. Yeah. In the meantime, um, I mean, cause you his, have a lot his, of capital his, needs, so it's just a matter of trying to decide yeah. what's most prudent. Well, he residents. was, you know, he has to do upgrades too. So, you know, we were kind of figuring out, trying to figure out what would work at most advantageous for us both. Keep the dialogue so, going. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just sort of where we are. Right. 
Okay, so we're going to kind of turn the page, and um, I'm going to transition transition things over to Tony to kind of talk about the details of what's included in the proposed project. Okay. Thanks, Dave. As Dave mentioned, uh, you're looking at a comprehensive upgrade to the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, the facility is basically a 1970s conventional treatment facility. <clears throat> Most of the technologies are 1970s, 1980s. So the first process would be your preliminary treatment systems, um, basically a new headworks facility with a screening and grit capture. Uh, and currently you have a grinding system. This is a photograph from August of 2018. And then just a concept of what it could look like. Your biological treatment systems, uh, the, the tanks have some structural repairs needed. There are actually some tanks at the treatment plant where water actually flows through the concrete. <clears throat> Basically, a new aeration system going from mechanical surface aerators to a, a form of a diffused aeration system using energy efficiency, efficiency measures. New secondary clarifier and then a new pumping system for the, the sludge. <clears throat> Solids handling system upgrades. Currently you don't thicken or do any processing of your sludge, it's just raw disposal. So you put in a thickening system, get just the sludge concentration up, save money on hauling, new polymer system, and then there's modifications to the existing areas. And then your ancillary systems, you've got modifications to the operations building, a new UV disinfection system, which solves the issues associated with the chlorine gas, a new plant water pumping system, new main electrical, new generator, and then miscellaneous site work. Is the electrical, um, uh, new main electrical distribution gonna be um, higher be for flooding, is going to be? Um, yeah, the yeah, it'll be ab above the, the flood lines. Yes. Okay. Were you going to upgrade the berm and the tank height as well on this? So there is some uh, resiliency measures in there. Uh, it may not be the berm. It may be a combination of the new structures will have higher walls. Okay. Or it could be the berm. Okay. So it's that's to be determined. So, but we're going to have some resiliency gonna... built in. Yes. Okay. Perfect. I, and I think we talked a little bit. Um, sorry, no, I was just going to say, I know Bruce has a question, but I, I, I think that it's best if we let them make the presentation and, you know, we'll have some questions to answer after, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. We'll Go ahead. No, I was just going to mention, we may have spoken about this. I can't remember with who, whether it was a workshop or not. The level of resiliency requirements may vary depending on the funding program. Right. So certain funding programs have red tape that requires, you know, compliance with executive orders, et cetera. So that's why it's a little bit of a, that was always a little bit of a, uh, that's okay. a fudge factor or just an allowance per se um, for the unknown. So and we tried to be conservative. And that's a bit why it kind of, we were looking at 18, you went to, we were at about 19 because we weren't sure what right. that requirement was going to be right. for berm work or raising the. Yeah, I know. think the key, and as we projected out future costs, we don't know what inflation is going to look like, but at 4% for construction, you know, sometimes we use three, sometimes we use four. The point is that I don't think anybody wants to go back to the residents and ask twice. So, right. Oh, there, absolutely. There not. was some intentional conservatism in yes. putting things together um, with that in mind. It's just not a good situation if we have to go to the well twice. So, sorry. Good transition point, anyways. Okay. Yep. So just in terms of the schedule, um, what we've projected is that in fiscal year 20, so from July of this year to June of next year, you'd be working on design and permitting for the project, um, concurrent with replacement of the existing secondary clarifier mechanism. Um, then you'd have construction basically in fiscal 21, 22, and you know, basically finishing off in 2023 where that would also be startup. So the reason the schedule is important, and we'll get to this kind of some of you have probably already jumped along, you know, ahead to the slides that mean the most in terms of what is this going to mean to the residents. The type of funding and finance opportunity that you choose, 
um, is going to impact the cash flow. It's going to impact when the debt, big debt from the project hits the residents and the ratepayers, et cetera. So those are things that I would expect that we'll get into more detail tonight so that we all understand A versus B, potentially C, et cetera. So as, um, as Trevor mentioned, uh, we're looking at a $19 million article. Listen, this thing can be 18.9, it can be 19.3. We talked about 19, that's what's on the article. So that's what we're gonna manage to. If, um, if something needs to get adjusted down the home stretch to meet that, that's what we'll do. Uh, we may, may have mentioned that the, the escalated costs of the two separate phases, had they been done in phases one and three, would have been about 21 million, $2 million delta, not hugely significant on its own. But one thing to consider, if interest rates do change, and I don't think any of us are probably prepared to anticipate that, but they're still relatively low. If they went up to where they had been historically, which is about 4%, um, you'd be looking at an additional annual cost of just under 11 grand per year per million dollar finance. That would be on the USDA track. So if you just make the math easy and call it $10,000 a year and 40 year note, and you're borrowing $20 million, you could be looking at an additional cost of, you know, $200,000 per year in interest uh, for even, for a portion, I should say, even if it was half of it, the phases one and three. So, Dave, <clears throat> let me ask: Are interest rates from USDA fixed for the pro like for the project, or does it change annually, or with whatever? So, unfortunately, we're we're still in purgatory in that the interest rates change quarterly with USDA. That's a great okay. question. Once you do get a commitment letter from USDA, which the precursors to that are federal underwriting, then you having an appropriation, they give you a formal commitment letter, which locks your rates, and it's a five-year lock. So hmm. at that point, you have five years to spend your money at that interest rate. It's kind of like doing a mortgage. You can lock the rate at a certain time. But it would change every five years after? It would not change ever. It would not change. It's for fixed. It's like, a th it's like a fixed rate okay. uh, you mortgage. All, you got to spend it all. Yeah. yeah. That would be scary. On a 40-year note. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, the, the only other thing I was concerned about, and maybe you can get into that later, was I, anything that had a, a life span of less than 40 years, I, you know, we, what, we wouldn't want to finance it for 40 years. So That's probably, a choice that it's yeah. a great, another great question. So USDA makes you go through basically a formula where they look at the elements of the project okay. and they... They boil it down into a factor, and if the factor meets the cutoff, it's eligible for 40 years. I would encourage you, as would they, take the 40-year note, and if you choose to pay things off in you know, years where you have that flexibility, you can do it. But um, mm -hmm. I think given the magnitude of what we're going to see here coming up, the initial hit on the rate payers, I would encourage you to take that out as long as you can initially, and then you have that opportunity to change it. Okay. We can look at some, and you'll see what well, the rates I, I, are for a 20-year note. Yeah, no, I guess I was just, I, I'm not, I, I do want the 40-year note so that the, you know, the t uh, rate payers have some, you know, modem of safety here right. on what they're going to pay. But, I, you know, if there are things that are only going to last like five years, it doesn't, you know, I don't know. Your, I just wanted to have some kind of breakout. Yeah. Your major that. components, your structures, which are the major costs, those are 50 to 100-year Typically, design life is about 75, but they're in a 50 to 100 year range. Okay, so and, and then, that's the majority. And then your mechanical okay. equipment is normal maintenance and routine, and you replace a pump every now and then, you replace components every now and then. It's very similar to what they currently do now. Okay. The majority of the project costs are the concrete, steel, and brick, and the labor, unfortunately. I mean, the mechanical equipment is actually a pretty small percentage okay. of the overall project cost. But it was just that comes up with every mind. owner on every project, mm -hmm. and it's a great question yeah. because okay. you, you be will pay more interest on widgets. a 40-year note, obviously, but it does offer some flexibility if you, yeah. if you need it. Okay. Well, that was just something I wanted to make sure we kept in mind, too. Okay. So in terms of funding finance options, um, we've assumed that you will move forward with the 75-25 split. That's not really a DPC thing. That's just kind of right. our understanding of how the town would likely deal with this. In terms of the financing, so that's the revenue side, so how you're going to collect the money to pay off the loan. On the funding finance uh, side of things, there's really only three alternatives, and then there's a whole bunch of sub-alternatives within that layer. But generally speaking, what we tried to do for tonight and for the 29th is present 
realistic yet conservative options. The last thing we want to do at this point, I think, is to give people hope that we're going to get a 75% grant. You know, the likelihood of that is extremely low. Mm -hmm. um, the likelihood of us getting a 0% SRF loan with 20% principal forgiveness, that's also, I mean, we're hoping and praying and begging. Um, but again, I think really what we're looking at is conventional loan. So obviously that's very unattractive. You do have a really good bond rating, so that's, that's an option for you if you wanted to go down that route. Um, SRF, which is, um, in best estimation, will be, will be no worse than a 20-year note at 2% interest. Uh, we've assumed no principal forgiveness, but you are eligible in that category. And on the USDA side, we assumed the 40-year note, the 2.5% interest, which is currently their poverty rate, which we believe based on discussions with USDA representatives. It's their gut feel, and they mm -hmm. do this every day of their lives. That's the category you'd likely be in, as well as a grant of approximately $3 million. That, that sounds like that's probably a safe hope, if you will. Now, that's not obviously what we want, but that's better than nothing. It's better than 0% grant, and it's better than 3.68% interest rate or whatever that, that is right now. So those are, the, uh, those are the, the scenarios we looked at. And then as James flips to the next chart here. The sun's back. Yep. The sun's back, <laughs> and we picked colors that look like the sun, so that was yep. really great thinking. <laughs> um, these may be a little tough to see on the handouts. Um, Turn it about six more inches. There you go. You got it. Yep. Thanks, Trevor. Okay, so on this, on this graph, basically what we're looking at to give people orientation is you have the projected annual cost of sewer for sewer users, and dollars are shown on the left, the vertical axis. Those are dollars per year. On the right, what you see on the bottom, I should say, on the x-axis, you see the fiscal years. So we talked about baseline, which is this year, fiscal 19. And then we talked about this project unfolding over four fiscal years, from FY20 to FY2023. There are two bars um, for each year. The orange bar represents the USDA scenario. The yellow bar represents the SRF scenario. So a few minutes ago, we talked about the timing of when debt hits the users and, and how this can be a challenging dynamic. Um, the black dotted line across the horizontally across the figure, that represents the current average annual residential sewer cost today in FY19, again, average. The purple dotted line, which is kind of going up like an airplane from left to right, represents the projected average statewide residential sewer cost. And again, that's just, we look back five years, we project forward five years, best guess. You can see with, with these two bar charts, the SRF program, um, one of the challenges financially with that is you close the loan up front. So when the project starts, design is not eligible in their program, so you'd pay for that out of pocket either way, either directly or through a ban, which obviously you're very familiar with. Um, and then after that, you'd, you'd close the loan. So you don't have to do any short-term borrowing with SRF. You don't have to go find any money. There's no, you know, the bond stuff per se, because they take care of that through the trust. But it hits. It is a big step. You go, boom, you know, overnight. You hit that all in one year. So in 2021, when the project starts construction, that is already hitting the users. On the USDA track, there's good and bad on that side as well. So with USDA... Everything is eligible, planning, design, construction, bidding. As long as it's in the project uh, uh, the preliminary engineering report in the application, that is the gospel for that, for, that, for that project, uh, for that funding uh, entity. You are going to have to go get short-term financing with USDA. Um, you're going to have to pay all of your non-grant percentage up front out of pocket. So you're going to go to a bank, you're going to borrow money, you're going to pay them back along the way, and you're going to pay the engineer, you're going to pay the contractor, you're going to pay all those bills until you get to the percentage. And let's just say the percentage is 75% loan. At that point in construction, you're going to close the loan, and from that point on, what they're going to do is every month you're going to have invoices, they're going to give you cash for the grant, and you're going to pay your vendors from that cash. So... The downside for you is it's a lot of work as a town, right? Up front, you've got to go do a lot of things. 
the benefit is you can stretch um, you can stretch the the adjustment over several years. It gives you a little bit of time to get there. And as you can see with the orange, there's some significant jumps in annual. I'm not down, you know, playing that at all. But it, it is a little bit more tempered, I guess, is, mm -hmm. is how I would describe right. it. Right. Right. Hit the next one, James. Same exact graph, monthly cost. So this is still sewer users. These are projected monthly costs, average monthly costs per home for just sewer users. And just as a point of comparison, and again, this is, this is completely subjective. At the top of the graph, you see a couple of lines, one in blue, which represents the average cost per month for cable, internet, home phone. If you've got Comcast or whatever, um, it's a little lower than mine, but I think in the ballpark. And then you have residential cell phone bill, which assumes you know two lines, a Verizon type thing. Neither of which is a bargain. We don't. <laughs> we're not making a plug for Comcast and Verizon. Yeah. Um, it does. It does show some significant increases, um, but it shows what that net cost is in each bar. So you're looking at going in in these scenarios from about 64 bucks a month up to about 103 bucks a month, or in the SRF case, 128. The upside to the SRF is you pay less interest, right? And you're mm -hmm. done after 20 years, to Carolyn's point. Um, you may get some principal forgiveness. How that works with SRF is this year it's 9.9%. So I'm gonna speculate that after 18 and a half years of payments, you're done. And I was just the, gonna the say, on the back side they, they always off. do it at the end. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. it, I mean, I, I know you, th you think of it as a grant, but they don't give you the money like a grant. It's it's backloaded. They're going to make you know. I know. At, yeah. USDA makes a hundred percent of the revenue from their program through the interest on your on the loans. The trust through SRF and the Clean Water Fund, etc. That's not, that's subsidized by the government. It's not a money making entity. It's just it's tied to the Clean Water Act from forty years ago. All right, a couple more charts here that um, James has got to get all the credit for these. He's the, the bar chart master. Um, so we had 75% of the project costs on the sewer users, but then you have the other 25% of the costs on the general fund, right? So it's taxes. So this projects on a uh, average annual residential uh, tax increase in tax costs, and James can probably better explain what he used as assessments. To yeah, generate these. These are on top of. This should be noted that if you're on sewer, you'd pay the increase to the sewer rate, and you would pay the taxes. So this slide would be just what you're paying if you're not on sewer for the project. Sorry. Yeah, we just took your fiscal year 19 mill rate and just projected out with the new debt being added uh, to the tax rate to get these numbers. And as you can see, once the loan closes in fiscal year 21 for SRF, that's the fixed cost because that that number won't change. And then you've got the same thing. That's annual, and then the last one's monthly. So clearly the lion's share is still on the sewer users, um, but it's not to say that those that are not on sewer aren't paying. There's a cost to both. Just a couple of wrap-up slides here. So doing the project as, as a single phase for South Deerfield does have some economies of scale, but it's a, it's a big pill to swallow up front. There's no doubt, $19 million is a lot of money. Um, we really are still going aggressively at, at grants and low interest loans. We will, Carolyn, submit a PEF this summer for the, either way. I mean, as, as a backup plan, uh, the goal is to just submit one, because who knows? Maybe the 9.9% .9 becomes 15 next year, and who knows? Um, you know, that, that ends up being a better deal for you guys. Uh, but obviously the main message is regardless of what you do and uh, which projects you move forward with or don't, the costs go up over time. So th this doesn't get better five years from now. You know, the residents may choose that this is not for them and that's fair, mm -hmm. um, but the, the cost, you know, when you do, when you do it is gonna be more, that's it's just life. Next steps, you have the town meeting, you have the warrant article set up. Um, beyond that would be the design and permitting phases in FY 2020. I mentioned the SRF application and we'll continue to go after anything and everything else that comes up. Uh, you know, usually Mass Works is a summer. That may be 
that may be of more applicability to another phase. So that's the challenge too. Sometimes the opportunities pull capital nearer, and that's not always a good thing for for the town. But once you've done the Mass Works application, whether we're successful this year or next year, you would keep that on the burner, right? And you can pirate a lot of it. Certainly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. In other, in so, other words, if you had to do, I mean, right now with USDA, they have an application for phase one. I mean, this shift that we've done over the last, you know, six mm -hmm. weeks, you know, likely would be a separate ask of them. Um, mm -hmm. Right. And that may or may not be to our, our advantage, right? That kind of depends on the timing of things. Right. But, um, well, I mean, that's why we're hiring you. We need you to figure out whether it's to our advantage or not. Well, um, that's a bit premature, I think. Well, um, the other thing that I guess I had a question on is, um, you know, what is it, of all the things that are, are you're proposing to be done in these in the combining of the two phases you know the more current um, projection if what 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 are the possibilities of things breaking down and DEP ordering us to do it I mean the the combined two phases is I hate using the word comprehensive but it's pretty comprehensive in terms of right. what's being fixed maybe less so on like some of the building features like windows and I mean listen sometimes you just kind of deal with those things when energy opportunities present themselves but mechanically it's comprehensive upgrade getting the second tank etc it's um I had a question on the sludge um, when they when they discharge discharge the sludge from the clarifier nor holding tanks I noticed that you have that as being worked on in this phase as well. And I didn't realize that that was going to be part of that as well. I didn't know we were touching that. So that, I'm happy to see that because I know that was one of the, in talking with Keith, that was one of the major problems that he has for operations there is that at some point we decided to split that up in multiple things and it really limited how much he could discharge in a day uh, or at one time. And I think one of the largest one is like full of who knows what, or for how long, it's kind of been like, let's put it here and not think about it. And so that really limited it, how much, and so if he has this, you know, and just so everyone understands, you don't, um, the way this plant works is it's a constant flow. I, I was, I'm a naive to how this stuff works, but over the last few years I'm, I've been educated and I always thought, well, the stuff goes in and you kind of work on it for a while and then when you're ready, you let it go. And it doesn't work like that. It flows straight through. So whatever's going into the plant at any given time, depending on how much rain or how many toilets get flushed, that's what's going out at that same rate. So you only have so much time to process this stuff and get it in contact, contact with, right now, chlorine or in the future UV. Um, but if you get a crazy day where somebody discharges a whole bunch of stuff at once and, he, and Keith is trying to struggle to get that balance right and you've got to discharge the bugs, because it's about balancing the bugs and the food, um, you don't have anywhere to put this stuff. And you're constantly spending a ton of money. I mean, the majority of operating cost is running sludge out. And, and if that sludge isn't diluted the right amount, you're just wasting money. And every time he discharges, you're wasting more and more and more money by doing that without having that space. So I was really encouraged to see that that's part of this project as well, to kind of fix that up. Sludge, electricity, they're right up yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, right. So I, I guess maybe one just distinction or clarification, certainly you understand this, but for the public, your proposed article, the $19 million article, um, you have the flexibility if and when you get the terms from your funding entities, you may choose to only move forward with what was phase one. Right. Right? That may be something you choose. Mm -hmm. um, you're asking for the authorization from the residents. Um, it's possible USDA, for example, may come back and, you know, they may say you've got a really sweet deal on the 13 million bucks that you submitted, but based on the grant money that Massachusetts has right now within that program, to go from 13 to 19 might be a 100% loan. And that might be something that you say, well, for the $2 million delta, you know, we may kick the can for a year and resubmit and see what we can get for phase two. Mm -hmm. um, that may be a choice that you make. I mean, you clearly right. all understand money and the time value of the money. So it shouldn't be construed, you know, or presented to the public that it's, it's an all or nothing. It's just right. you're right. asking for the opportunity done. to make that decision on, on the resident's behalf. Uh, 
Well, I, I guess what I'd like to say, um, I appreciate you having some preliminary plans for that clarifier, but I, I feel that, you know, all of this work needs to go out to bid and, and, and go down that process. Uh, you know, all of this needs to be reviewed, and that's what makes this so difficult for me, because I understand perfectly well that we need to do repairs over there. One of the things that I was extremely disappointed in, in this report, and I'm going to assume that this is your final report, even though it's marked draft, with this change, there's no comparison to alternatives and what to do with it. Um, you know, when I first started looking into this thing, you know, grit removal and all this stuff was a big deal, and it was explained to me how it was such a major deal in our South Deerfield plant because you had to pump the tanks down, you had to put uh, bobcats down in there, you know, it was a big expensive thing. And yet that hasn't happened in seven years. And I went to another plant, yet yeah, another one today, where I see a guy in there with a, a broom and a shovel cleaning out the grit, and it, it's, it's only a, a few inches in the bottom of the tank. Um, I, I've seen multiple different ways of dealing with cleaning channel cleaners and stuff like that, different headworks things, some that worked a hell of a lot better than others, excuse me, um, and, and I don't see any of those options. And, and I, I feel that I can't support this plan with this direction because it's so expensive for the community, and I don't even think it's the best way to do it. I'm not saying it's not a good way of doing it, it's just very expensive. And there's no alternatives in this proposal as to what other things we could do to, you know, treat our uh, septage and still accomplish, you know, meeting our permit and moving forward. I, I don't know if, I, I don't feel that there's time now to address any of that. So it's like all or nothing. And that's what's so disappointing to me. Well, it's all or nothing because we spent two years looking at this. Uh, we, you know, we, this, ha we haven't, this isn't like we put it together in the last no. three months. I mean, this has been stuff that we've been looking at and deciding on and working on for a long time. So it's not like we got this plan and it's a gun to your head and you got to do it or you don't. It's, you know, we, we've been mulling this over about what needs to happen. And, and I feel like we haven't moved and we need to get moving in the right direction. I'm sure over the design process, we may decide to change some stuff or how we do it or look at some other alternatives. But... Um, it's pretty basic operation, so it's not like you're going to find something for half the price out well, there. I'll give you what I saw today. I was at a plant close by at only, and their flow today was around 230,000 gallons. And their headworks project in their channel consisted of a stainless steel grate with one inch between the grates laying in the channel. And about every four hours, a guy went out with a garden rake and pulled out the wipes and stuff and put in it. It didn't get rid of everything, but that's how they dealt with the thing. Uh, and, and this is the same place where I saw the empty tank, you know, how they deal with the grit. So, and in, in my exploration, I saw other types of mechanical things to clean stuff out. I went to one place where I saw a mechanical bar screen and a channel cleaner working side by side with the two operators in neighboring communities. And one guy hated his thing and the other guy loved his. And, and I don't see any of these choices for us to make. And the sewer study committee hasn't had an option to, to, uh, or any ability to look at these different choices. I mean, we all want to fix this, but I don't think that just throwing a lot of money at it is the best way for our community to move forward. I'll do my best to respond to what I can, Mr. Chairman. I, some okay. of those are maybe not questions as much as they are statements per se, but I understand. first relative to who you work with, that is your choice as a community. Uh, you've got a town manager that very well understands procurement. Sure. Uh, you have options in terms of how you want to do things. That's not really for us to say. That's for you to decide how you want to move forward and if you want to move forward. Regarding alternatives, um, we did put together uh, a number of alternatives in the preliminary engineering report, less in the report per se. I can tell you that we believe this is the least costly alternative that actually meets what you need to do. Um, Kip, respectfully, I think we disagree strongly mm -hmm. with some of your um, perceptions relative sure. to what you've been doing. Um, Tony and I have been doing this for over 20 years each. Um, we've seen a lot of things go really bad. Um, Town of Hatfield doesn't have much in terms of these protections. You can get down the street and talk to Eric, and you can ask him what his pumps look like when they pulled them out. Sure. He had an impeller that looked like it was almost gone. 
and it was covered with rags and it was completely destroyed. They don't, have, they don't really have much going on down there in terms of headworks. You can go see Great Barrington before they had headworks there. They have two guys that basically spend three days a week, two guys pulling rags out of pumps. Um, but wouldn't you agree that it's a good idea to stop the rags well before they get to the pumps? It's usually just not feasible to do it at multiple locations based on the configurations of but those we only wells, have one inlet. I mean, we're not talking about channel grinders. I think this is a whole other thing. I mean, well, I'm not typically when you look at the, the iterations of is it going to be equipment A, B, or C, it's done at the 25% design phase. So if you move forward with the project and if you select an engineer to work with you on the project, you likely won't resolve these issues until that level of the project. Right. That's just where it's done. Um, we're not going to put our name on some of the things that you've mentioned relative to the headworks. Right. We just won't. I get um, we have a professional engineers. We have to put our stamp on it. We have insurance. We don't want to have clients come back three years after the fact saying, well, you know, we just spent half the cost doing an alternative that doesn't work. And I'd agree I've seen with it that. happen before, so I just I don't want that to happen to Deerfield. I live well, here. Well, neither do I. Yeah. But it, it's still the thing that there, I, I've, I've witnessed these things, and I don't claim to have the expertise that you have. But I also am capable of seeing what works and what doesn't work and, the, and problems. And I rely on everybody's opinion. You know, I don't say anybody's full of beans. I listen to them and I make my own uh, assessments. But I have seen alternatives work just as well, if not better in some cases, at a lot less money. And, you know, we, we don't have that opportunity right now. And, I, and I mean, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. I feel like we're being pushed, you know, and I'm not necessarily saying from you because as a community, we realize that we have to do something, but we're, we're being pushed to rush to judgment. And then, you know, we're going to ask people to make a commitment for decades going forward as to this is the only solution. And, and that's, I don't believe is the case. And that's why I'm so frustrated with this because it's like, darn, I, I know it needs to get done, but we've had no opportunity to really look at different alternatives. And to Trevor's point, we've been looking at it and it's great. I remember three years ago when I came, I looked at a plan that Tony did with another firm, and it was worse overkill than this. And I was like, what? You know? And yeah, but that was for a different design. Well, I understand that, but that's the point that I'm trying to it save was. the town from now. Okay? And it, all right, go ahead, Bruce. Um, just a question. It's a good question relative to the design we already paid for for the Headworks project. It included the back truck. I don't think anything you've done to date has anything to do with design, just to be clear. Right. Okay. So you did, as I understand it, you did a partial design for a headworks facility? I oh, don't no, no. We had, we asked Tony, uh, we had complete plans ready to okay. go out to bid. So when it, if and when the time comes where you move forward and you work with someone, yeah. you should get those CAD drawings from that, that, that previous consultant. You should, because yeah, that'll well, reduce the overall cost of the design phase. That's, that's well, not something we, we have. We that's do, something we do have, have the plans, but we can't, we can't use them, and you know that. I mean, we, we can't turn those. We don't own those plans. The, I the disagree with you, Mr. Chairman. Well, you should read your contract and ask yeah, your council you, to look at that. I know okay. our contracts with the town for previous work, you, you have right to use those uh, documents at, you, at your risk. Mm -hmm. And unless the town signed uh, a contract that... But you a little while ago said you wouldn't put your stamp, on, I know necessarily on my thing, but if, you, if we had plans from another engineering the firm... Previous we, design, the previous design concept was accurate. Yep. There you go. Absolutely. Listen, we can, we can look at a lot of different projects. We can give you 50 treatment plan upgrades that have been done, significant comprehensive upgrades that have been done in other facilities in southern New England over the last 10 years. You're going to see dollars per gallon per day that are the same as what you're looking at now. There's no $5 million solution. It just it doesn't exist. And if somebody tells you that it does, it's a barrel of snake oil. Bruce? So, just to follow up my question, is there a back truck um, position uh, portion of the building in the Edwards building is it set up for a back truck? No. no. That's the difference in the two sides. 
plans that we receive and the plans that we're going to use. I believe so. so. Yeah. I the design concept that we recommended does not include a garage for a vector truck. Right. If you want to add that, you housing. can certainly do it. It's just no. housing for the headworks. It, it's just housing to protect the headworks elements from the weather. Right. Yeah. Bruce? Uh, just stepping back a little bit, uh, just to clear the air a little bit. As professional engineers, what have you seen as pros and cons for this channel cleaner system as against the bar cleaning system? You're the professional. I mean, you know, and uh, I'm not favoring one, one one or the other, but it seems to be a constant disagreement. What, I, what, I'd like your opinion for the uh, pros and cons of each. <coughs> my Actually, my recommendation would be to talk to Keith. Pardon? My recommendation would be to talk to your operator, Keith. He's worked at some large facilities. He's worked at some small facilities. Um, he's look actively looks at different technologies and alternatives. And the bar screen is the alternative and the technology that he would like, and it's where the industry is going. He's putting in mechanical bar screens for rag removal. Would you, would you just, um, with, with your expertise, would you just explain, because I think a lot of people in the audience or will be around voting on this, they have no idea what a bar screen is and what a channel cleaner is or clearer is. Is there a, just a quick, this is what this does, this is what that does. I know they function similar, like removing stuff. But. So, do you want to hear? No, you should do it. So a mechanical bar screen, as Kip mentioned, um, one of the facilities that does 230,000 gallons a day, they have a, a bar rack that sits in the channel, and there's multiple bars spaced at one inch, half inch, quarter inch, three quarters of an inch. It all depends. We're proposing quarter inch. We're proposing a quarter inch spacing. And on a manual system, which is what Kip described at this other facility, the guys go out and they have to manually rake these up. Yeah. And that can lead to, you actually have one, I could have showed you on one of the photos, but it's kind of a moot point. It can lead to issues hydraulically because it causes flow coming in, as you said, it right. never stops. It's constantly. It can also cause channels to overtop, depending on that. But a mechanical bar screen is that bar rack, but instead of paying labor for someone to go out there and manually rake it every single day, it does it automatically. You can do it on level, it can do it on a timer, or it can just do it continuously. And you're talking anywhere from a quarter to a five horsepower motor. Gotcha. So the flow, the flow never stops, and the bar screen just keeps going. Right. Okay. You know, the 80% of the costs for the headwork system are probably non-mechanical equipment. It's, it's configuring the channel, putting a building over it to protect it from the elements. The mechanical piece of equipment, and we talked about it before with the 40-year thing, you'd think it would be a bigger price. It's not. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty small portion of the overall yeah. line item. So again, and respectfully, Kip, we can disagree on the technologies, but I, you know, our job is to make a recommendation for you in terms of what's going to work. And this rag and flushable wipe thing, it's, it's out of control. It is. Um, and we can't really deal with it in the collection system here unless people stop doing what they're doing, and they're not going to stop flushing what they flush. Right. So I, you I don't know. have 20 pump stations. Some of our clients do, but Springfield, for example, they've got some huge pump stations, so it makes sense for them to have screens or bar racks at those facilities. Captain Lathrop has your only pump station. I mean, you couldn't even do it. No. Right. Would. Eric? Um, it sounds like you're sort of asking, to, to a point we're asking questions and answers. I have a few questions. May I approach? Sure, you can. Questions? Come on up. Thank you. Don't worry, they're not for you. I won't buy them. <laughs> you can have them. Actually, they, they aren't for, for, uh, for the engineer. Um, uh, Eric Brown, 72 North Main Street. Okay. Um, as it relates to the, the, the report, I've read it, the whole thing, you know, um, the information there is pertinent there's a lot of good stuff in there as far as it relates to how you guys are looking at setting this up what issues there are I understand the funding although I don't necessarily agree with the dollars because we don't have plans to actually Correct. come up with these conceptual dollars I do agree that they've been inflated because you only get one kick at the cat when you go for this I understand that completely when doing a capital project um, my questions are actually for the select board and Trevor you made a good point we've been kicking this can down the road and, and it, it, it is like we do have a gun to our head though um, so, so to that point, um, you asked the engineer earlier why this submission was late. They gave you an answer. I, I do this for a living. The answer wasn't acceptable. 
um, right? You have a contract. Granted, they wrote anticipated dates, um, but they didn't hit those dates. They didn't achieve those dates. Now, they referenced change of scope. So I ask you, was there a written change of scope to that contract? No. No. So they did additional work to do the, the emergency repair, but it was not as it related to the contract you have. So why weren't they held to those dates? Because we knew the time was going to change. They were working on other stuff for on us. On a separate time. contract. So in this world that you're getting into, if you don't have a change to that contract and they do a separate contract, that's separate resources. You still want to hold them accountable for mm -hmm. that work. But we didn't. So we lost three to seven months, depending on which portion you're looking at. I well, agree with that. But I disagree, we too, because we asked them to do the USDA grant. Yes, as a separate scope. As a separate, as a separate scope. contract. Right. We so the first contract is still applicable. So you can disagree, but you're wrong. Mm -hmm. In the world of construction, you have two separate contracts with dates that need to be adhered to unless they're changed in writing. Per your contract, they have, they have a clause in there. They have to have a written change agreed to by both parties. I'm yeah. sure there was emails back and forth with Wendy on, you know, what, that we wanted to submit the USDA grant, that we needed to do the DEP. I think, I'm sure I think, there are, I think again, Eric's, talking, Eric's talking that they should do things simultaneously at the same time. Unless so, it's agreed upon. Right. And, and to my point, the reason I'm going okay with this it. is it's cost us time. Mm -hmm. Already I see the slipping in the emergency repair. You're looking at taking on a capital project that could be upwards of $37 million over time. This is the small portion of it. All right, we're looking at getting into design, mm -hmm. which could grow in, in time, and you're looking at getting into construction, which could have the same impacts. I bring this up because do, I do this for a living, right. and I make contractors a lot of money finding holes that we're creating. And I don't want to see that happen to me in this town because I'm paying the bill at this point, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so what are we going to do going forward to prevent uh, delays to the schedule? You're asking the wrong person, but I, I, I think we're going to focus on moving forward. You guys forward. are managing the job, so I'm asking the right people. Well, no, we would hire a manager. So you I would hire them? That's the answer to the question. Yeah. You're going to hire a manager, and who would that yes. be? Uh, I haven't decided that. I mean, we have, we have one opportunity to hire an engineer, and we'd, we'd look at other alternatives. They're going to be the designer of record, but they wouldn't be the manager. You, who's going to keep Correct. them? I haven't said, look, we're, that's a little further down the road. I haven't hired a manager yet. We haven't looked at you, hiring a manager well, yet. Well, it's not down the road because you're going to town meeting in a few days to ask for funding. Yes, I'm asking for authorization. I'm not asking for $19 million to borrow tomorrow and start building. That I'm has looking, to be I'm ballot looking vote to, anyway. To, to begin the process. But, but these here. are the questions that are going to come up. And I ask sure them here instead of asking them there. But you can ask them there too. Uh, I, but, but to my point is, what are we going to do to maintain that? And, and, and I bring this up, and, and you guys know it's a sore subject, but we have a sewer study committee that's never met with people on that that were willing to help for free, mm -hmm. mind you, that, that haven't been engaged. Correct. So why is that? So the reason we um, had put a hold to the, to the sewer study committee maybe a year ago is because they met for, for well, about 22 months and, and they came to an impasse. There were people leaving, the chairman left, other people were leaving because, I joined. They, because they weren't, they weren't um, getting Couldn't to agree. a spot where they felt like they needed more expertise they wanted to go out and get some more help. And then we felt like, uh, several of us felt like we were out of the loop. So we said, well, why don't we um, take over the project, see where we're going, try to move the project forward. That's when we came and interviewed Stantic and we interviewed uh, DPC. And then we decided to move forward with this direction based on a straw poll and, and our gut feeling on how the, the, the uh, experience they had with our town and we wanted to move forward in this direction. So that's kind of where we're at today. And we haven't had any work for the sewer study committee to do in my mind. Um, people can disagree with that or not, but I think we're at the point now where we would like that help because we're starting to get information in for people to look at with expertise. Before we didn't have anything for you to look at. So, so, so to that end, a year ago, people left and new people came in. Myself, Josh Schimmel, yeah, I think we all know his credentials, we know my credentials because I submitted a resume. So why did I get accepted to a committee that was going to be stagnant? Well, I the only thing I want to say is to, to Trevor's point is that a, a year ago is when we interviewed uh, the engineering firms and, and we chose to go with uh, Dave's firm. Uh, but the sewer study committee still was in existence until around August of that year. And they didn't, eat, uh, didn't um, meet that often. And then in, I believe it was November, 
the majority of the board wanted to be more engaged, so uh, they they asked if they're gonna. They had to work out schedules, and uh, you know everybody couldn't get together, so it never really happened. So, so I understand the board wants to be more involved. You guys have a lot of responsibilities. It's not just the sewer. You have the schools, the police, the everything yes, we do. in town. Yes, we do. So, yeah. so what I guess where I'm going with this, because I already know the answers to my questions, just so you guys understand that is if you had engaged a sewer study committee, we could have helped you facilitate getting this done on time, the mm -hmm. phone calls, the, the management of it. We're not looking to take over your authority. We're looking to help you and give yeah. you guidance because these are things that are gonna, like now, this is the little money. Down the road, it's the big money. And, and if you have holes, loopholes, if you have, oh, we had this change, we had that change, and it's all just done by word of mouth, and it's not gonna go well. It's gonna be 57 million, not 37 million. And I can say that because I've seen it happen, and I've made contractors a lot of money doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and as a contractor, right? And then, and then it's not going to be three years; it's going to be a five years. And now you're going to get in trouble with your grant so if these things push. You out. mean like when you got a bid as a contractor, you would then work on a project, and instead of thirty-seven million, to be fifty-seven million? Absolutely. If if the owner has design changes, design flaws, errors, oh omissions, sure, yeah. If you want to right. change stuff, right? Yeah. Or if the design comes in late and the contractor gets delayed, now you're talking not just direct costs but extended overhead, mm -hmm. right? This is this is what we do, um, and and I, I want to warn you that if we don't delegate this to someone that has the time to manage it and the knowledge, we're going to end up instead of three to seven months late on a, yeah. on, a, on this, right? It's going to be on a bigger design. It's going to be perpetual in, in big dollars. I think I agree with everything you're saying. I think um, we weren't at a place in the last year to do that. And I think we're, I think we're coming into that place now where we're, where we're ready. Okay. We've moved the project well, along enough. I appreciate enough. that. Um, so that takes care of a couple of my questions and concerns. And again, we're, we're asking for these dollars, but I, I don't feel that you have this, the, the, this, this set up in place to where you can, you know, you're going to be you need but to make see, sure everyone is, understands but that. But this is it, what you have to understand. If we don't ask for the dollars, this is not to spend the dollars. The dollars, we have to go to the ballot and have people vote to spend the dollars, okay? Mm -hmm. But we're asking for the authority. Then we can't move ahead. If people vote no on this $19 million, then we're going to be six to eight months or a year. Oh, I'm sure. Till next year. Right in the same place where we are now. And, and then we all the costs, and we have lost our opportunity for the USDA grant. That's part that, of the major item. So you, there's always going to be an opportunity for a grant, but we can, well, we're not here to talk no, about that. No, no that's, that's, that's not that's right, not because true. if you look at what's going on in the federal government, nothing is happening on the federal government as far as it, in, uh, putting money into infrastructure. This current, this current. I, I will completely disagree with you because you want to. We have more work than we can handle because of all the money going into. Well, I, so, I would so. love. Yeah, I would disagree with you because That's I've private, got no money. Not public. There's only six million dollars in Massachusetts for USDA. That's a drop in the bucket for That's money to do these money. kind of projects. That's leftover and yet, money. We, 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 I'm not going to debate the politics. All I know is, is we, well, we have more work than we can handle. Well, that's a major part of it, Eric. Is the politics. Well, then, then that's fine. But getting back, there's other people that have questions about the cost. I, I'm not, I'm not going to argue the cost. I think there's more than enough but inflated you're here, there. But Eric, you're here arguing for us to move forward, and then at the same time you're saying you can't support the $19 million um, authorization. Yeah. So guess what? We're not going to move forward. Yeah. We don't need to meet because nothing's going to happen. You, you need to meet and you need to do it right. What you're doing now is wrong. Okay, I what you've done now is wrong. It, it you have to work through this as a municipal project, Eric. Well, I, I and understand. To, and you have to go through certain hoops, and you have to go through, through certain uh, and, I, and I think steps. the hoops are great, but the, but the reason this thing is floundering is because it's not being pushed by the right people. And not to say that you guys aren't doing your job, but you guys weren't hired, you guys weren't brought on to manage just this one project. You have a lot of other things you need to do, and you need to yeah. delegate it to people that could push it forward. And if you actually gave it to those people that could push it forward, it would have been further along already. Is my point. Dave? You still would have well, to go well, to town meeting. Give Dave a moment to talk. Well, my, my questions aren't for Dave. My questions. I know, are for but you. I'm. Yeah. He I'd has like a to response. clarify the schedule before mm -hmm. you leave too, because yeah. I was misquoted in there. So yeah. Well, if Mr. Chairman allows me the opportunity. Well, that's fine, but again, the, the contract was signed, so the, that's all we always go by, right? The signed contract when it comes down to it. So uh, again, just going back to it, 
however it gets presented, make sure that it gets presented so people understand that we don't have the plans. This is a, this number is a budget number that's been of course. inflated because what's going to happen is you're going to take this to people and ask for, and you didn't let me finish earlier, you're going to take this to people and ask for $19 million and they're going to, they're going to have a pucker factor that's going to be unbelievable, mm -hmm. right? So you have, without having plans, they're going to ask you where it came from. Let me finish. So when you present it, make sure they understand that that price has been budgeted for escalation growth and to make sure you have enough because otherwise it's going to fall on deaf ears or worse yet, it's going to fall on open ears that don't want it, right? So I, I get where you're going with that and I get what you un I understand. But again, going forward, you need to have people involved that are, have a town's agree. best interest. I think we And we do. Interest. And we, we, agree, do. Right? And okay. we want to. Well, and it's not the designer or the contractor. Mm -hmm. I think we need right. to understand that too. Correct. As much as, as, much as I, nothing against you guys, but you guys, are, you guys are in business. You're when right. I was a contractor, I was in, I was in business for my employer. Eric, we, we fully we intend to have agree. the uh, sewer committee meet. And we it's just not want just to the be sewer part committee. of the I mean, I, 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 I'm not trusting a $19 million project to the sewer committee. Right. We would hire a professional, somebody to oversee the project. That would, that would be part of the job. I right, mean, a third party. Correct. Okay. Um, so again, so that, that takes care of those questions. Um, you, the report was updated, so we, you already apparently that was put into the Dropbox, but not, but not available. I, they were, you had access to it. It was in the Dropbox. We, we gave everyone permission. Want. Somehow it got cut and pasted out. Oh, okay. There's not. There was nothing in there an hour ago. But it, it had the file earlier. in. It, it had the addendum one around noon today. And so if it got okay. copied out, sometimes on Dropbox, if you move a file. Uh, Everyone had that's, that's my fault. Okay. So, we'll so we're going to change the permission and read the files. When okay. We back and we'll send it out to everybody. And that was answered. So the only other question I had, and I think uh, it was asked earlier and, and, and obviously um, discussed, obviously this is going to go out to bid for construction. Are you going to request bids for design, given the fact that design costs are usually typically, um, and you guys can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but typically anywhere from 5 to 10% of the construction costs. Um, that's going to be a decided. big number. I haven't decided on that. I okay. think you should. It's a big number. That's, I'm yeah. putting it out there. It's a big number. So competitive, competitive is, is what makes things you know, less costly. So I'm asking that question. If you don't have an answer, that's fine. Correct. But I, yeah. but I just want to point it out that those costs are usually 5 to 10 percent. So if, if you're talking you know, 40 million, it could be anywhere from 2 to 4 million. And right. I'm rounding up. Mm -hmm. So um, that's all I yep. had. I appreciate your time. OK, right, thank you. Thanks. Dave. I'd just like to clarify the schedule. Sure. The agreement that's referenced, the three to seven month thing needs to be corrected. We had an agreement that basically said this schedule was based on a signed agreement by July 1st. We got a signed agreement at the end of August, two months after it was projected. The anticipated schedule that was based on a start date of July 1st had completion by December 2018. Right? So two months later is the end of February. We we're three weeks late with the report. Just in defense of us, we were late, period. It was three weeks late, not three months, not seven months. We also said that we'd have the financials done by November 2018. We started two months late. We were done a month early. All right, just like to clarify that for the mm -hmm. record. Thank you. When we're Thank wrong, we're did. wrong. But in that case, it was a little exaggerated. When, when did you say the contract was signed? The contract was signed in late August 2018. It was signed the 7th, 23rd. It might have been dated that. We so. received the contract. Trevor can attest. We yeah. met directly after Labor Day. Yeah. The first date we could all meet after we got received the signed agreement. I'm telling you, when we received the signed agreement, it was late. I believe it was August 22nd. There was a meeting, but he didn't get it then. Well, it, it, you well, you signed it as a chair of the board of selectmen on July 23rd. That's right. not a meeting. This is he didn't right, but he didn't get that and start acting. I wasn't at that meeting. After. It didn't right. come to DPC until the last week of August. Yep. Okay. Anyways, all right, uh, Jerry, did you have a question or so? I'll hold for town meeting. Okay. Is there anyone else that has any questions? Uh, oh, good. Tim. Uh, manual versus um, automated um, screening systems. Um, what's the relative cost of employing somebody to be on call or work 24 hours, seven days a week? Because I assume that the, the toilet, the, the sewer system doesn't shut down at night right. um, versus having an automated process. I mean, is that something that you analyze? I mean, round numbers, you're probably looking at about somewhere between seventy-five and $100,000 per year per person, including benefits. If you do that for two additional shifts, assuming someone's there the first shift, you're looking at roughly $200,000 per year, which is equivalent to 
three to four million dollars in capital. So just to yeah. clarify, right now we don't have a sewage. I think we did originally or something. There was something there, but there's nothing you now. Have a, you have a sewage grinder that doesn't work. You have gotcha. Ra there's okay. rags throughout just, your facility. But it just pushes through. them through in a but different form. But as soon as we put something there, now we have to start maintaining that. Right. What, what right now it just goes in. But it just goes through. And even when yeah. there was a grinder, I don't get that whole concept because all it does is put all the pieces in there. Right. They We're roll, on the same page. They Kevin. roll yeah. around, they ball up, and, and yeah. you have you the same to. problem. Yeah. You know, but to, to, to Tim's, what I'd like to just tell Tim is I think that, you know, relying on an individual to clean that thing it is ludicrous in today's age. It, it, that is not the way to go. Uh, but, you know, like they said, this whole mechanical thing and all of the apparatus that goes along with it is very expensive, where some of the things that I saw, these channel cleaners, they fit right into the existing channel and the water flows through a screen and there's an internal, like, worm drive that draws everything out. It sprays water on it, uh, decontaminizes it, it's decompressed and it's pushed into a dumpster and they take it away. So uh, it's, I don't want to say it's inexpensive, but it's a lot less expensive than some of these other designs. And I, we haven't had an opportunity to explore some of these things. So I had a question on that. If you put that in, I know, I assume putting in a screen system, you're going to have to redo that channel because now you're constricting a bit or enlarging the flow. If you put a channel clear in this thing, you're obviously restricting flow. So d no. what would that, does that change the <clears throat> mechanics of it? Can you just drop something in there without modifying it for the flow that's coming through? Well, where you would be putting, if you were to reuse your existing channel that you have, one, it's too small if you put a screen in, so you run the risk of overtopping the top of the channel. Right. That's one. Two, you're not going to build a building right there in the middle of basically the field you would be building a new building with your headworks facility offline because it's going to be real expensive if you build it in line trying to pass all the flow while keeping because the facility has to gotcha. the facility has to maintain operations you have to maintain compliance with your permit right right we don't have a secondary way to yeah what well, it's called a pump <laughs> yeah, i got you i looked at a, a a bar screen that you designed i want to say in sabre connecticut or I mean. Sabre, and uh, you know, I saw how the thing worked. So it was not a very tall, one, a big one. It was probably 30 inches in the water, and it stuck out in the air, maybe 60 inches or something like that. And uh, the channel was about 30 inches wide, give or take, and, and the water flowed. And I and I watched how the thing went. I went to the next town over, and same 30 inch wide channel. There was a channel cleaner in there, and the same thing happened. The only difference is the bar screen pulled the rags out of the water, you know, where the other one had a, a giant neoprene screw inside the cage and pulled it out. But both of them had thir approximately 30 inch channels, 30 inches square, and they seemed to, you know, work really well. My only observation is that the, the channel cleaner, I guess they both clean the channels, is that because of the size of the holes, more stuff got caught in this and pushed out where with the other one, it only got the rags and a lot of the grit stuff that was you know smaller still went through and went into a tank that was into the ground and that had to be, I think, pumped out. I, I don't know. Could have been the spacing of the screen too. Yeah. As Tony mentioned, could, it could be right. quarter inch, half inch. Sure. I think though, the apples, oranges, pineapples that we're talking about, we're mm -hmm. talking about a few hundred thousand dollars of a, of a project For the mechanical cost. things too. But, right, but how you'd protect it from the, the, the well, environment, per se. They're, what, they're the I like, what, what I really liked about, and, and I, I shouldn't, I, I believe he was the one who did it, because we, we had this discussion before, is it had a very inexpensive metal building. It was about a little, maybe a little bit bigger than a two-car garage, you know, and it, it, was, it was a really nice setup. It was very convenient, and, you know, it, it wasn't this really elaborate thing. How old was it? Two years old. Exactly. Go back in eight years. <laughs> well, if you want to rebuild something every ten years, metal's fine. You can put it outside. You can you can put heat tracing on the equipment. It's going to be gone in this environment. Okay. Again, our opinion. Yeah, I got it. Um, I have three uh, questions. One is on the existing money we've already appropriated, one million dollars. Um, I heard, I believe I heard that there was some negotiations uh, with. Legal counsel 
relative to the contract. I want, we're just wondering whether the sewer commissioners have awarded this project yet for design? No. 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 And I think the next question is on page two. We talk about the four phases of the project. The fifth phase, which is ongoing, according to a note further into the presentation, the collection system is included in all phases. What it says later, that the collection system, the ongoing is a multi-year program. Is, it, are, is there any collection components in the $19 million? No. So when do we propose starting the collection system improvements? So as I understand, I'm sorry. As I understand it, you have an ongoing program right now that you've begun budgeting for in discussions with Kevin. He's got $100,000 per year in his budget right now. Um, he's asked me for a list of top priorities for FY20, so he can start tackling that list. Uh, but the, the answer is no, there's no collection system work proposed in the, the South Deerfield plan upgrade. Okay. My last question is relative to your proposed schedule um, on page six. Um, How much I believe you included the existing fire fire that we're repairing. There's also a design and permitting phase. Is that for the 19 million? On the schedule. Yeah, you have to go through a through the design and permitting phase of of the treatment plan upgrade. You've got to um, get. You got to get deep. So we, we should anticipate some costs in FY20 for the upgrade. Yes. Yes, you do have your design and permitting in fiscal year 20. Okay. They're in the projected sewer rates and tax. No. Uh, sorry, I got distracted. I don't believe they are. Um, we have we have no, no article relative to um, cost to pay for any of this. Other than the 19 million to a debt exclusion, right? And then we would have the short term borrower to pay the, the engineer. Is that where it's going to work? I don't think that's settled yet, but I think I believe so. Oh, Jeff, very quickly, just for clarification, very minor point at the moment compared to what we're talking about today, but could go into more of a concern uh, for the uh, septic users because of disposable fees, increase in disposable fees, obviously, because of fewer places to get rid of our sludge. So question B is this design to handle the septic system users in town as far as disposable when they have their, tank, their tanks pumped? So did you, did you Will they have that? access to be okay. able to dump? Okay. Here in town, once the, the system. once the new facility is upgraded, the facility will have capacity where septic could be dumped into the facility. Mm -hmm. Current, currently, the facility does not have okay. the capabilities. Jeff, so that you're was roughly that, talking that's talking about 2023, then. Yes. And I thought there was should an issue with that. Should you decide you want to do that administratively? So Tony's saying there's capacity for it, and then. And I, I, was, I thought it had to do with strength, or we weren't sure what was in it, and that kind of stuff. Cur like, currently, currently we can't. You but, have no means to handle it. Once that. the whole facility is so upgraded, I didn't realize the that. biological system was in phase two. Once the whole system's upgraded, the biological system has capacity to accept septage. Obviously, we can't take 100 trucks a day. We could take right. three or four or five. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, that has always been something that. I felt that since the taxpayers in general have to um, pay for that, that would be one of the benefits of the new system that would be available to everybody in town. Right. Well, I, I, just I, I mean, they still have to pay, like, so Greg's to come pump, but they would be not have to pay the disposal. Right, fee. I mean, disposal. I just felt that was fair. Right. Um, I mean, to be honest, we wouldn't even be talking about a head of works program if people took care of what they flush down the toilet, like people exactly. take care of their own septic systems. I mean, I'm extremely careful of my septic system because I had to remortgage my house to put one in. So if people paid attention and didn't flush this stuff, we wouldn't be talking about it. 
So, I mean, there's I, not much I, we can I, do. I agree with you completely. You know, people, people have a tendency to uh, abuse sometimes. It's gone, flush and gone, not their problem, but it is. It is. Skip. Yeah, I just want to throw out a question on, on the procedures for beginning to repay or how we would pay for uh, the, the money that we borrow. Uh, typically, or at least my experience has been during the construction phase, you're going to borrow money because you've got expenses. You're not going to pay any principal back until that plant is complete and it's turned over to operations. And at that point in time, then you do your 20 or 40 year payback. Up until that point in time, it's short-term interest payments. No principal payments, short-term interest. Well, except if we go with the USDA grant. Oh, I thought, no, the, S S the reverse, the SRF. The SRF. USDA, you pay the short-term interest until yep. The, yep. you pay yep. out 75%. If we choose the US the yes. SRF, that's a, it's a bigger hit, gets paid off earlier, and we wind up maybe some forgiveness at the end, but I think then you start paying earlier. Right. With both of these programs, you have slightly less flexibility with when you start paying your debt back. With USDA, you pay, start paying it back like two years later. Okay. But you still may pay some debt before you finish construction, like six to 12 months before. But Depends that's on because how your construction runs for more than two years. And they make you close that, yeah. that loan at 75% or whatever the non-grant mm -hmm. percentage is. Tim? Um, excuse me, because I didn't have access to the volume of documents that you've all read. Uh, did I understand correctly that you, have you designed the system and this is what, or, or they need to hire a designer, perhaps you, um, to design a system based, but you, you, what you did is, this is what a project like this would cost. This is a planning. Even an analysis of. Planning phase. What needed to okay. happen and what your recommendations were. Yes, sir. Okay. And so part of that 19 million will go into hiring some firm, whatever firm that is, and they will design a system based on the blueprint that you prepared? No, or we didn't prepare any prints. Yeah, just no. a, it's no, just well, a, a, ro a road plan. The, the plan, plan, the concept? Yes. yes. Concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I don't mean Correct. actual drawings. No. Right. Not how it's uh, <laughs> so, so that that means that some of the discussion we've had tonight, maybe they will have a different idea about how to take the, 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 the you know, the crap that's being put into the system wrongly out, and that might be as you say, it might save or it might cost more. Fair enough. So you know the ballpark you're playing the game in. Yeah, we, we're basically. It's not five million. It's not fifty to million. Two million That's dollars, right. you know, and give or take. And um, what we're now saying is, we need to authorize the town to consider spending this money, and get on with the work of getting it designed and yep. built, and narrow down that. Your contingency or your and. Putting it out to bid, you know, get designers to, you know, four or five firms to say, we want to bid on designing this project and making a decision. That's part of the next phase. Once the money's been approved to be spent, then you go out and you make your best deal. No. So, no? Public bidding. Public bidding, that's because what I mean. You don't make your no, public bidding, that's what I mean. <laughs> you don't well, make your I mean, we're Massachusetts, not, we're not going to make that decision, and then you would also right. be putting out the public bid on uh, management. We, we could, or we could choose to go forward with who we choose. It's not like getting counsel. Right. Select board has that choice to do. I mean, but basically, you go through a public process that says, this project is out there. Who wants to bid on it? The construction, yes. Yeah, and then as far as, far as a manager, you can interview firms and make your own decision. Right. OK, so I'm just trying to clarify yep. sure. how the process works. Good. Bruce. Uh, I'd just like to go over the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, timeline for these uh, uh, grants and so forth. If we were to get a commitment from USDA and you're hoping that it's going to show up within the next month or so, is what I meant? Um, pretty close to that, yes. So, we wish it was before town meeting. Okay, right? so then the town uh, has to make a commitment for that. How much time does the town have to make that commitment after USDA, USDA, you know, the commitment being $19 million? Right. How much time does the, US, the town have after the USDA commitment? So with USDA, 
they don't give you a commitment until you have an appropriation. They'll give you a soft commitment, if you want to call it that. With SRF, you would submit interest in August 2019. They would publish their list of projects funded in January 2020, and you would have to appropriate your funds by June 30th, 2020 on that timeline. That timeline is just super black and white. From mm -hmm. that standpoint, it's really easy. USDA is a little... Yeah. So with you, it's a little iter it's it's iterative. And maybe he was asking like, so so we appropriate. We were blessed enough to have the yeah. town support us. We we moving forward on this project. We hear in a month that USDA says we're going to give you three at two and a half or whatever it might be. Yep. Um, do we? How long do we have to make that decision before they go? Nah, we're good. We're giving it to somebody else. I don't know. I think it's going to depend on where they're at in their cycle, how much money's left for the state, yep. whether other Who's projects asking? are of interest. Right. I okay. mean, presumably, you'll you'll be there. Um, well, that's part of the reason why we're asking for the 19 is so that we are in a position to accept the money because so that, that's what I'm trying to. Yeah. Yes. Is because if, a three million dollar grant forward, is a three million dollar grant. Great opportunity of losing. USDA grant. Right, yes. and, that, and, and that's the and challenge for the. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Right. No, no. And and yeah. what we want to do is we they will cover the design co design and engineering so that they can it will be, pick up this clarifier that we're forced to do right now. We have no choice. That is the hope. Yep. So the hope is that we will get the three million. We will not spend what has been appropriated by the town already. We will use right in move right in with USDA grant. And then we have to go out for the rest of the process. I, I, myself, I'm only committed at this point to do what we ha mandated to do for DEP. I haven't decided what to do because this is such a huge number. I don't feel comfortable yet. Right. So, but it, we have to approve the 19 million. No, we're not going to spend it because it has to go to a ballot. There, there is no opportunity to spend this money until we go to a ballot to approve it as a town. But if you authorize it at town meeting, at least it gives us the opportunity to accept the USDA grant and put whatever we need to do as, as we continue on, we will hold a ballot question once we settle down what we're going to do. The, the problem is this is a thing that we have to go forward with, and it's nebulous. There's no question about it. Nobody's made up their mind. I'm not committed to right. anything at this point. Committed Myself. To forward. And I'm, I'm before the horse because you want to get that commitment. Right. And, I want and, that three million bucks because that's three million well, bucks that we don't have to pay. Plus, we have two percent interest. If for you 40 do, then years. the shot clock starts. Five yeah. years. And we have five right. years. And you know so you need yes. like three, we have to basically. move forward. So you right. have two years of wiggle room if you chose to use it, and right. you can walk away. But if we don't want the three million dollar grant. We just want to pay the million, and we figure out want to do something in a couple of years from now. Okay, that's fine. It's up to the town. Just to be clear, there there are no grant opportunities that are going to present millions like USDA for water wastewater. Right. I know. There'll be opportunities for energy efficiency to get a couple hundred thousand here and there, right. maybe a half a million. The mass works things is tricky to tie jobs to a treatment that's plant. That's a jobs thing. It's that's not a, a jobs thing. The pipe in between Old and South Deerfield. That's, that's certainly an opportunity for mass works. That's if, real, if but usually Mass Works is super political, and you know you got to get in line and wait your turn. You know well, that's why there's sort of you know there's an advantage of teaming up with Greenfield, and that was why we were looking at the HUD grants before. You know HUD grants once in a while come out, whatever, and so that's why I think we shouldn't do anything with Old Deerfield because we do have some options down the road for that, but we don't that have much choice study. with South Deerfield. We have to move forward. Uh, Jerry. Yeah, Carolyn, you said, right, the 19 million, you want us to you know, approve it so you can go forward for the grant. Then you said you have to come back to vote to spend the money. What happens if you vote not to spend the money, you still wouldn't have the grant. Correct. Correct. But at that point, you would all have a plan. We'd be all committed. We would have multiple meetings. We would oh, have made. <coughs> yep. So you have by now. No, you no. Know. No. Well, that's that's wrong. This reminds me of the marijuana thing. You know, they voted to state to have marijuana. And the town was able to vote to say if we wanted our town. No. So we, we have a figure, but the issue is, uh, Jerry, you can't um, you can't have plans already because plans cost a million bucks. 
two or so three million dollars. That's to fix the clarifier that, that we're under, you know, DP saying you have to do this or it's $10,000 a day when we start missing permit. So you can't have blueprints already. I, I thought you're right. You'd I'm have a blueprint for these rough designs, and we can look and say, yeah, 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 yeah but we have we have to hire. Right, and that, that that's cost right? It costs money to do that in time. So again, it's just kind of the idea was to ask for the authority. If we got that blessing from the town and USDA is granting us this money, then we start moving forward. If USDA says nope not going to happen. We're not even going to put anything on the ballot because we're going to have to relook at the whole thing. Meanwhile, the plant deteriorates every day. And we're like, you know, if something catastrophic happens there, we're paying a ton of money in fines. Jerry, so, the only if the only thing if we don't get the USDA grant, the only thing we're moving forward on is that million dollars to fix a clarifier. That's the, what we're the, doing anyway. the town has already approved the money. Okay? On that you you voted to to Authorize us to spend that money. Do we have plans for that? To fix it? We no, have not, yet. not yet. We're hoping to get the grant so that the first million of that three million or whatever they're going to give us, we will then move forward with that. We haven't moved forward with that because we're hoping to get here from the USDA that we're going to get well, the grant. Yeah, yeah but and we, that, we, I would just like to add that that roll of paper that we haven't seen yet that got brought to us tonight, kind of ahead of schedule is a rough start, I guess, uh, or a good, good way start on the plan for that clarifier. So we'll hopefully receive that tonight so everybody can look at it. I know, but we could look at it. <laughs> like you can't. We also got a contract tonight that we haven't gone over. So We prepared those plans you know. at our own risk, right? Yeah, we were trying to act in good faith to and preserve Dave, the And Dave, I want you to know I very much appreciate it. I, I do. And, and we are trying to move forward on, we, we know we have to move forward on the clarifier. We have, that's mandated. But it would be nice to have the USDA grant for that. Kim. So just a question. Um, are you saying that the three million USDA grant you want to get would pay for the clarifier, design, et cetera, and the million dollars that we've appropriated would not be spent? Okay. No. No. Okay, that's why. Well, I'm no. We wouldn't spend that million on that clarifier. The clarifier. Right. right. So the USDA grant would be for the, the wastewater treatment uh, project, or would it be just for the clarifier? Well, the, the, do you want to take that, Dave? Yeah, I was going to say this really is so confusing. We've asked it for thirteen million dollars and change from USDA. Right. That's what we submitted. Yep. As part of that thirteen million dollars, it included fixing the first clarifier, fixing the clarifier that you own right now. Our hope and our goal is they're going in parallel, but the plan per Skip's comment is you move forward with fixing that clarifier and you put that money up front. If that project is conceived in eligible format with USDA, which it is right now, we would have them review the bid docs even though they wouldn't be overseeing the bidding, it would be retroactively eligible for reimbursement at the end of the project. So to, to Skip's point, you would, you know, you'd have a ban for that million dollars. You'd roll it year one, year two, year three. And if you did move forward with phase one, that 13 million mm -hmm. minimally, then you would be eligible to recover those costs along with the planning phase, along with the, the right. binder. All those costs are eligible in the backside of the project, not with SRF, but with USDA. It's so very confusing. To it the is public. confusing. I mean, so. Does, does everyone seem to understand? I mean, do you under, I mean, Jerry, do you understand what's happening? Okay, no, 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 okay. So, Dave, can you, can you try to explain it so that, so that Jerry, 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 I want you to know I'm really appreciative that you came. So could you just go run over it again so that Jerry would seem to understand? Because then if, if Jerry understands, that means that there's a modem of understanding in general. But I'm, I'm really worried because it's confusing even to, my, to me, who I've been trying to figure this out. And so it's hard for me to explain it to Jerry. Sure. So, so I would really, really appreciate it. So the it town of the town of Deer. If you want to stand to a point, just think that I know it needs to be done, we need all this, you know. But it just seems it's been going on so long, and you're no further ahead than you were three years ago. Oh, no, we are. We are. We are. It doesn't look it. 
but to the general public. But I know. But we are we are much much further along as far as what we think we need to do, and and um, and and a, and a good blueprint of going forward. Whether whether we all agree on that or not, I, I think we don't because we have a negative vote so far on the on it. But um, and, and there may be many others in the in the audience that don't approve it, and and, and it doesn't move forward. But I think. This is the best guess we have going forward to get rolling down the road. And there's a lot of design work still to go and decisions to make. Um, well, I guess what my question is, all the respect, all the respect mm -hmm. to that. Sure. When all said and done, are we going to have an option between one and two and this company or another company? Uh, th that's a decision to make whether we'd want to go out and get another bid for somebody to start this whole process over again. We will miss. We'll miss. Well, why would we start the process over? We own all the material they gave us. Right? Oh, no, I, I agree with that. But you're going to get another person. They're not going to just take all this. They're going to want to do their own. They'll use it in, in base of their design, but there's another, you know, they'll want to start fresh. And yeah, so I'm sure there's designs it. out there for different, you know, different towns. You're just going to take it, put a different name on it, stamp it, bring it here? Mm, no. No. <laughs> no. No. I wish it was that easy. Yeah. <laughs> so, Eric? So, so, so to that, Trevor. Could get another designer to come in, and they would be able to put this together quickly. You're going to give them a scope, which you have your scope. You have your scope. You give them that scope. Now they may need to, to rework some of what Trigon has done in order to do the design drawing and whatnot. But if you give them a schedule, you give them a deadline, and they commit to it, they will adhere to it. And I can tell you that <coughs> I'm, I'm working on four design build, five design build projects right now, and so we're accelerating some of them are. And if if uh, the group I'm working with right now can design, you know, 50 tolling stations in New York State within six months, I'm sure that same outfit could design our water treatment plant in that time too, and do their study. So all things being equal, it can be done. It, I, I get that, but so, you're talking six months, right? Yeah. So miss the USDA opportunity. They can do it three months. My point, point being is. They, they, can, they can make it happen. The, the, you give the, 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 the scope and the time frame, and that's what your contract is based on. Whether they put 50 people to it or two people is based on the outline you give them. And I'm saying that's all well and good. I still want to ask the town for authority to move forward. And so I oh. think it's time to ask that money and then decide on where we want to go for a plan. We know we need to do something. We know it's in the ballpark of 19, if it's 17 or 15 or whatever. We've asked USDA for 13, because that was the phase one. We talked about lately grouping in phase three to that to just do it all at once. But so those decisions need to be made. I think next Monday night or next the 29th, I'm still gonna ask to move forward and then we'll, we'll group all that in by then. Bruce? Well, I think part of the emphasis that has to be made too much of the conversation sounds like this authorization going forward is the commitment by the people. Right. It has to be an emphasis. It is kind of like, go ahead until we know some more. Mm -hmm. Because the final say is at the ballot box. Yes. I think you have to uh, under make people understand that this is, this is only an authorization to go to the ballot box. It is not an authorization to, go to borrow money. money at this point in time. Okay, this is only so to allow you to go to the ballot box. And Thank you, so Bruce. You can, when it comes to special town meeting, or, or at the ballot, to hold a special town meeting and reintroduce all this information with some better in, context. In, in better context that maybe it will be more palatable. Of course. Yes. Thank okay? you, Bruce. Right now, it's sounding like you're, you know, you're going to authorize this at town meeting, and we're going to move right ahead. Okay, it's not that, okay? It's only saying we can research some more and get better answers, but we know you're willing to back it. And, we have and then the final say is at the ballot box. Thank you, Bruce, because that's really, I think that's where people are getting confused. We, yeah, I, we're and, just, I, and I believe that, that they are. Okay, and Dave, can you just go over again this so that Jerry can try to get, understand what's going on? better because I, I can't explain it to him any better than my poor attempt before. I, I think he had it. Yeah. Yes. So, so Jerry, you feel satisfied that you have yeah, some I, answers? Um, I followed him by wrong, and, you know, I give him a lot of kudos. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that you felt you understood because it's really hard to explain. Tim. It might be, uh, and you probably would have done this yourself, but 
it sounds like the town council could an answer the question in a way uh, that Bruce framed the issue. This is what we're doing now. We're authorizing, and in the future, we will be coming back to you to vote for a plan or whatever it is. And the town council is probably good at explaining things to people. One hopes. Yeah, but people need to think about it, and 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 it needs to be translated so that people understand that you know you're not actually paying for it right now. Right. Well, that's what I'm and saying. And we, we don't have a plan right and now. And I think there's a difference between understanding and supporting. Yeah. So you know, so I think people get it, but there's also like, do I really want to support this? That's you know, and that we're hoping to kind of get people to support, you know, and maybe more information will help them decide to do that. So. Hmm. Bruce. Last question. Um, from what I understand, uh, there will not be an annual town meeting with the vote. The voting for the annual, after the annual town meeting. There will not be a question about this on the ballot. On the ballot? No. 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 Because we don't have we don't have any enough information for this. I mean, we don't we don't really. So I mean, how do we pay for their fees for the FY20? If, 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 we, if what we're going to do is probably we'd put have to, if we go through, we're hoping to go the USDA route. So we'd have to borrow the money short term anyway. If we do that. So you're saying that if, you, if the people authorize the money at the town meeting, there's not a question on, on the ballot vote, and that we do get the grant that we have to do short term borrowing based on the authority we were given at the town meeting. Then, that's the slippery slope. And that, no, that's when you go, once you have all the information, that's when you get a special election call and you call the question. Yeah. But until then, you know, we're just moving forward. We're hoping this vote at authorization will be good enough for uh, USDA to grant us at least yeah. moving forward a little bit more of a harder yes. And then, um, I, I, yes, and then once we've got to start paying bills, we would ask the town get the get the thing moving forward and ask the town to, to support it that doesn't sound quite right to me but so so what you're suggesting is that after the appropriation we do get awarded a grant then we have to go back and ask by a ballot vote maybe, if the people will allow you us to borrow this. the money yeah we, I mean, all right you can't, let's you can't. let the, let the, let the, go ahead I just, sure yeah, so please I, think, I mean i guess i would hesitate to say whether I think the, the Diana, you have to speak louder into this because people can't hear you. I know. I'm sorry. But I'm going to get complaints pull, pull, pull if you don't pull it forward. <clears throat> um, I mean, I think, Jim, maybe you can correct me, but I, I think the, the vote is not going to be deemed to be passed until the debt exclusion vote right. passes. So whether USDA will give you the hard commitment the town meeting vote, if it passes, will be a good indication for, for the USDA. Mm -hmm. But it isn't deemed as a vote that's actually voted in the affirmative until you have the debt exclusion vote. Right. And we do intend to have the debt exclusion vote right. promptly by hopefully the end of June okay. is, is the idea. We have to have a we, we have to have so a then it's, excuse me, but then I can't even help myself. So then it's thirty people deciding for all of us because special no, 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 not no, special no, no. town meeting. It's I'm sorry, special it's a election. Ballot. A ballot it's, a, it's, a vote. it's a ballot vote. It's a special election vote. We just didn't not make the timing to get it on the question onto the annual. The, there had there was a 35 day window to get the question on, and we didn't make it. So, well, we don't have enough information. I I I, I can't so ask this you. This is where you come with pushing this stuff through. You don't have enough information I understand and I appreciate you even admitting that. So then I, it becomes, you know, this like cram, like like the school roof. You know, they get us all in a room and they tell us that the school roof is falling in and we have to fix it and there's free money out there and we've got to get it and how did that go? Well, we have a new roof. We, we have, have a, a new, new roof. Yeah, and we it have a new roof, but thanks to Kip, it didn't cost, and they didn't take us over a barrel. Oh, they got, they they got us halfway over a barrel. barrel. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if you're dealing Listen, with a state, they're going to get you over a barrel. Listen, we went to... 
It, I know, oh, but it's a bigger, it's a bigger Kip project, and I sure. were at every single meeting every week well, to make sure that the, roof. that the school roof was done in, as best as possible for the least amount of money. And all I can say is that we would make sure the same thing happened. It's just that, but why put yourself in that position? Because you have to. We got to move forward. So. We, we, we have not done anything on this for years, and that, that's the problem. Years. Every time we get to a point of trying to move forward, nobody want, really wants to move forward. And that's what's happening here again. If we don't support this $19 million authorization, then there's nothing to put on the ballot. We have to wait until the next town meeting, and we're not doing anything. And, and, and just think, there's only 12 people here tonight. Uh, Eric. Yeah. So, so I think... And I appreciate that you and Kip went to the, the school roof with a $3 million project, or $3 million and a half million, whatever it was. This is 10 times that big. So I, I'm going to tell you, you go to those meetings, they're a different world than what you've been to. Okay? So and that's, that's why we would hire someone. Why we that. Exactly. I think what, 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 and I know this is where Jerry and Pat are doing, and I, and I can appreciate this. We're going to vote on this $19 million at, at, at the annual town meeting. What their concern is that now we have that set aside, then all of a sudden now we're going to start spending it and only 30 people are voting on how to spend yeah. the $19 million. I think right. that, 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 that needs to be... And that's wrong. Right. That's, right. that's not accurate. Well, so, 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 right. so explain to them how it's going to be. Well, we, we, we just did. <laughs> I, I want to make sure... Okay, so... so, so yeah, so... Okay. What it means is that... Exactly. Yeah. Right. Or, or more. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, no, we all it, have the option. Everybody gets the option. Of course they do. But the number of people historically that show up for some of these well, things. Yes, for some things. But this is a huge thing. And I hope that people will, I mean, I'm trying to get the word out as much as I can. I hope people will take an interest, come to these, come to town meeting, and continue to start educating themselves. Because it, how, I don't know how many votes it took to get the elementary school combined and put over there. That was six town meetings, I think, and multiple things. We may go down that road. But they did it wrong. Can, can, I, make, <laughs> can I make a suggestion, Trevor? Or yes, Trevor, please. Or just, can, yeah. Bring that up when you guys are presenting this, that, that there will have to be a special ballot to appropriate that money, and if the course. people there need to be paying attention for yes. that, because I think that gets, people leave that meeting, and you guys know it, they, they don't hear from them for a year, right? Yeah. So, so this is a big deal. It is. If you only have 100 people on the town vote on it, that, that's a problem because what's going to happen is after it's all voted and said done, then all the naysayers come out, right? Yeah. And, and so, so and, and I can see why, why there's concern here because it's a lot of money to be spending when you only have 100 people coming out to yeah. vote on it, right? And, and, all, and, it, and it could be the 100 people that come out and say no. I mean, that's yeah, the well, thing, that's right? You know what? And, that's, know, and that's really and we, scary. And we don't want too. that. We want people yeah. educated enough to make a good decision, what, whatever it may be. Um, well, we want people to feel comfortable, and that's why one of the reasons I honestly don't have, we don't have numbers, because I am not comfortable with what our choices are at this point to commit to you to say that this is how I'm going to vote, because I, I don't know how I'm going to vote at this point. Okay, hurry up. you only got two weeks. I'm voting yes for the authorization, but I don't know how we're moving forward yet. I'm kidding. Let's I move know, on. Okay. Is there anyone else have any questions? Dave, do you guys have anything more? Also, I guess we're good for the next okay. week. Yeah. But, Jerry, honestly, you understand Thank the, you very the much. Timeline. Appreciate it. I, Thank I you. Thank you guys for coming out and sitting through that and working with us and giving us answers and trying to move us down along the process. It's, mm -hmm. As you know, I'm sure this is not your first rodeo. You've seen this process no. lay out many other towns. Many Sometimes other, I'm out there. Okay. Well, exactly. I mean, everybody's, everybody's Dave, got their own town. Dave, thank you very Thank you for the information so far. Okay. Great. Oh. Chris, I'm Next really year. sorry. We got Chris waiting over here. Ready? Who was supposed yeah, to go home and do more work. <laughs> Yeah. The next next item on our agenda is the uh, Municipal um, Vulnerability Preparedness Round 3 Grant Application. With actually, Mr. Dave, Chris Curtis. before you go, Come on up, um, Chris. Chris had a, um, he's putting together our, our um, Municipal Vulnerability uh, Preparedness Grant. And um, so we had the option of increasing the berm and the yeah. tank both in your suggestion, right? Because that, that, we're going to put that in. They want to know what we're doing. Why not? Okay, perfect. Okay, I didn't print that. Do you? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yep. Is that all our stuff? Is that equipment? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah, because I the uh, age friendly. Chris, um, Lisa um, White and Dave. Dave said it was going to be potentially 
a combination of an increased of berm yes. and tank height for resiliency. So okay. you can put that in the green. Yeah, I will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I just wasn't sure yeah. until he said that. Um, I left. I left uh, to come yeah. here, so I hadn't heard back yet from. I been. I had was chasing down Rich Hubbard for his letter of support, oh. so I haven't heard back. But I, I would assume that we're going to get one. Everybody else had been. Yeah, so that was really helpful. Thank you for getting all of us. And and Trevor's going to um, chase down Darius and uh, Tina from the elementary school. For support and letters? Oh, for, actually, yeah. you needed. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I got that today, and I'll, I'll work he on that. He just needed a little bit more explanation so he can. Yeah. yeah. Beat yeah, on him. Been involved, so I... Okay. So. Just scoot forward a little bit. Here. Okay. Well, I'll I'll start introducing this. Diana's making some copies of a couple of things um, so that you have something to look at. Okay. You know what I'm going to tell you, to Chris, is yeah. because otherwise I come home. Loud. To, you need to pull this a little bit forward so people can hear you. How's this? A little louder. Any better. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Louder. Act yeah. like you're in the back room. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's great. Yeah, you can get that one. Thank you. Is this what I have? Oh. oh, thank, thank you. you. And this is the scope of work yes. MVP. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Application three. So um, we are proposing um, to file an application, which has to be submitted tomorrow, to the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs for uh, the town's third grant under the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant Program. Uh, we have one grant um, that was provided for the formulation of our plan. We have a second grant that's going on currently for the design of the Mill Village Road culvert and some additional tasks. So this would be the third one and the second implementation grant. Um, there's a total of, of six tasks that are proposed in this um, in the scope of work. And uh, just to run through them quickly, one um, would be the construction of the replacement culvert at Mill Village Road. This is the one that's under design currently with tie and bond. We expect that their design plans will be done uh, very shortly, and so we would be ready for the construction phase of that project this summer, um, and that's why that is in here. Second task would be design for a replacement culvert at Kelleher Drive. That's the town's second top priority um, for culvert issues. And so the design piece would, would move us into position to move advance that project at a future round. And that, that culvert just goes under, I know there's two, one goes under Main Street, the other one goes under Kelleher. This is for Kelleher Drive. That's correct, yep. That's the one that's um, failing. Yep. And so my only question on this is, Chris, if they award the money, the next round is, is supposedly, I had heard, July. So if we get awarded this, um, would we be able to put in for implementation on Kelleher Drive in that next round based on putting out um, to tie and bond for this design work? Because they sort of have done some of this stuff already. Right. It may be possible. I guess we'd have to see what the time frame is for that next round of, of grants. This, the one that we're applying for here, all work has to be finished by May 31st of next year. Um, so that's a pretty tight time frame. Um, I'd have to see what the RFP says when it comes out and what the time frame is. Yeah. Um, but it, if it's within that same fiscal year, I think it would be pretty tough to pull that off. Um, so we'd be talking about, um, I just want to make sure that, because I'm not sure how much longer Kelleher Drive is going to stand up. Mm -hmm. So I, I was wondering if, if we should risk Ty and Bond going out and doing some of the pre-work thinking that we're going to get this grant because um, I think we're, you know, there still is not that many, there's more communities than, we're, than the last round, but there's still not that many communities. So we're very competitive and they've right. already, I know that since they've already funded the design work for Mill Village that we probably should get this for Mill Village. And, and, and we amended, they accepted the amendment on Kelleher, you know, adding Kelleher as our high priority. So I would think that they would give us the design and then, and if we were able to move on it and submit a request for um, implementation in July, that they, because they funded the design work, that they would then fund the implementation. 
and that would and we could, then could do it over the winter and hopefully it lasts over the winter and we could put it in for the early spring or maybe late fall if fall is you know decent weather do you think that is that too aggressive well i think the downside is that if you go ahead with advancing the design work before you receive the grant mm -hmm. that's probably not going to be eligible cost under the grant um, yeah but you know Zach has been willing to work with us so he might be willing to start some of the preliminary without actually billing us well that's a different question I guess yeah. if you if you get it under contract is what I'm saying I think it's probably not going to be an eligible cost under the grant mm -hmm. Um, I, but they're I would, usually pretty good. Um, I mean, I would wait personally. What do you just think about timing think gonna... for the? You know, uh, how is that Kelleher Drive going to infect the schools? And is that? I mean, you've got a lot of traffic every morning, every night there, and then right. all afternoon with sports I mean, it and would all. Be, it would be catastrophe. I'm thinking, I'm thinking summer is like the time to do that. I know. I, I don't know. Well. Let's just, hopefully, it's a tight, hopefully it holds up. It may be just an emergency. The, but. Th the thing is, there's lots of money. The governor has committed to this. There's yes. lots of money. I mean, you know, he just he put in ten million dollars in this round, which is I know. I mean, this it's is fantastic. Like fantastic. And so, if he keeps this up, we have a really good chance. And then, um, I mean, they they've been announcing this like in six weeks. I mean, we could call Katie and ask her what did she think. Sure. And maybe we can make that commitment with Zach or something. We can certainly do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I feel comfortable with that. Okay. And, and let's try that. So we've All got right. design. So the yep. first two tasks are culvert replacement. Yep. Um, this MVP program is really not a culvert replacement program only. So it's really right. We need to do others. It's really yeah. important that things. we show that yeah, this absolutely. is a really comprehensive approach to addressing the town's um, municipal vulnerabilities. And they want nature-based solutions. They want public outreach. They want uh, land conservation work. Um, those are all things in the RFP. So there's four other tasks here that really are an attempt to sort of broaden and make more comprehensive this project so that it's more competitive, right. um, even though they're re relatively modest in cost. So the third task is uh, for design, again, of green infrastructure improvements in the town center. And what's proposed here are um, eight tree box filters, which are a stormwater management tool that can be used to channel stormwater from streets um, into the ground rather than into the, to the waterways, right. um, reducing flooding potential. And a couple of rain gardens would be placed at the, um, the two schools, the, the Frontier School and, and the Deerfield Elementary School. Um, and again, those would be to try to keep some of the, uh, the runoff from the schools uh, parking lots and roofs from getting into Bloody Brook. Bloody Brook is the one that's causing much of the flooding, yes. so this it's a pretty good argument to make that for a relatively modest cost, we can do these green infrastructure improvements. Um, and then working on a, a policy for the town to, to um, when you do infrastructure projects going forward, to try to include as much green infrastructure in those as components as possible. So that's the third task. The fourth task is mostly public outreach. Um, one piece of that is to do a townwide forum on climate resiliency, which um, we've called Climate Resiliency Deerfield 2030, because the town really needs to take as, as many actions as possible by that date. Um, and it would be a, a townwide day-long forum on a whole variety of topics, ranging from you know, updating people on many of these projects to um, what people individually can do um, with their homes and, and, you know, in their individual lifestyles to try to reduce their impact on um, electrical use and, and, and climate impacts to a whole, you know, variety of topics, agricultural, uh, no-till agriculture, things like that. And then there's a piece in here for um, public education and outreach on the new RAVE alert system to make sure that once the town implements that, the public knows about it, knows how to participate in it. Right. This is to switch from um, Code Red to RAVE. It will save us, um, it's about half the cost. But also, um, what we're doing here is asking for money to do mailing and other pu public outreach so that we can try to get more people signed up. Because right. if you have a landline, it's on, but guess what? Most people have cell phones. and, yeah. and you got to have voluntary sign up and we have a smaller percentage of 
people that are actually on our code red now because um, you know they people haven't signed up their the cell phones right. and and we really need to do a push. Well, I, just give me a second here because it's the way my mind works. <laughs> I, I look at this thing about public education and new uh, rave alerts, which I think is is good to do it. But then there's well, it saves money. What okay. saves money? The rave. It's it's a well, half uh, the cost okay. of code it's red. Here, this is for twelve thousand uh, dollars. There's a company in Florida called Megacolor. You can get a four-page folder. You get five thousand of them printed for two hundred and forty-nine dollars. If you mailed one to every household in town, which that's about twenty-five hundred, that costs you, uh, you know, twelve hundred and fifty dollars. So for fifteen hundred dollars, you could get it done. Why? I mean, I know we're, I see we're getting the money, but our uh, in-kind match of two thousand dollars is more than what we would need. So. That's Lori. That's Lori's time. Our um, emergency manager to, um, you know, okay. facilitate overlooking this. This is not actual. Um, but oh, but I'm just saying the twelve thousand dollars is. No, but I think I think I think that's a valid point. point. Yeah. We we were sort of ballparking the printing cost on this, and and if right. you've got an idea for a way to do that more more cost effectively, then you know, let's idea. do when it. When we I were think. putting this together, we just we rounded everything up. But, but that's so. that, that. Don't you see that as a problem? I mean, I'm not giving you a hard time, but I mean, don't you just see that as a problem in general with, you know, government? It's like I don't know. I can't yep. just shake it away. You asked for just, money because I didn't uh, know maybe they wouldn't print for us. We, okay. This is what we decided. We have 3,600 households. Yep. And we wanted to do multiple mailings. We wanted to do public outreach. We wanted to do other things. So mm -hmm. we. By the time you did the mailings, printed a dollar, say a dollar, mm. for a printing of each household, and then mailing, so it's a dollar fifty to two dollars. Okay. So you're up to seven thousand, and so we just rounded it up to ten thousand. Okay, I'm just you know, giving my just, thoughts. Keep, yeah, no, can, can, continue no, on. We can come up we, with other we, If we that's come up, or we can save the money. We yep. still get the money, but we okay. we haven't. We don't have to spend it. For okay, that. we Perfect. can do it for something else. We can take it to the I kids. I didn't want to interrupt that. No, one, but this okay. budget can be can be. Uh, modified at this point. Of I don't we, want to we, we still have time to do we that. Want, so. we want to it's almost for 400000 yep. We would I love to have 400000 Sure. Okay. And um, then we can okay. sort of mess around with that. So do, do you want to just reduce that a bit? No, I, I'm not saying reduce. I just think that it's, it's a lot. When now we I'll get to spending it, it, maybe we can reduce it. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, when we go to spend it, we can, we can tr you know, we'll find the most cost-effective thing I, I right yep this was just the ballparking yet when we had the Got meeting the other, the other day okay. you could have come you walked by <laughs> you could have talk, come in so task five is the um, is an evacuation action plan for great river hydro and other flooding types of emergencies um, this is you know discussion here was that um, great river hydro did these inundation maps for mm -hmm. What would happen if, if there was a catastrophic failure of one of their dams um, and how that would impact Deerfield, um, the amount of time that there would be available to get people out of, you know, the schools in old, old Deerfield, for example, is fairly short, about an hour and a half. And it gave a, you know, a set of maps and, and some phone numbers, but it didn't really have a clear evacuation plan. So the thought here was to gather together the folks that would most likely be impacted by um, either a flood of that nature or a flood of the sort of Hurricane Irene nature and to develop a more detailed, more comprehensive evacuation plan, including looking at what the available routes were, how notification would occur, things like that. Um, and it's basically convening, you know, some of those key players like the schools um, in a task force meeting to try to get, get a plan together that everybody can agree on. And I also brought it up at Homeland Security um, meeting on Tuesday um, as a potential um, asking them to, you know, um, put aside money so that we can coordinate with the MAC, the Multi-Agency Coordination Center. And that would be to coordinate, um, you know, evacuation plans all and up, up and down the watershed. So, um, you know, people were open to that because that's a was a, on the after action report of our tabletop back in November, that was one of the things, was to coordinate regional-wide evacuation. Because um, one of the things, you know, Sunderland would be gone, but our Beaver Drive area um, it was would also need to be evacuated within a very short period of time. So um, I felt that um, 
we really needed to focus on this to make sure that people were aware of it. And that was where some of this came from. When we went to TCC? Yeah. yeah, I felt like when we were there, it was, we obviously saw the need and there was some scattering thoughts on what do you do? Okay, so we get everybody up to Eaglebrook and then because Connecticut, the Connecticut River goes up a couple hours later, you're trapped unless you're like going Ridge Road on four by fours to get the kids off of there. But um, yeah, so there's some thought that needs to go into it still. And then the last um, task six is um, a land conservation prioritization uh, plan and map uh, for floodplain parcels along the Deerfield River that are the most important ones for protection in order to preserve that sort of floodplain capacity for storage of, of floodwaters in that area. And this would be something that primarily is done uh, with in concert with Franklin Land Trust and the the large in-kind match that you see on the budget here is, is from Franklin Land Trust. Um, we're hoping to get a clear commitment from them <laughs> mm -hmm. by tomorrow that they're able to, to make that sort of commitment, but they, they did offer that at, at the meeting that we had to discuss this um, prior. So question on that. Um, this is kind of looking, I guess, an over bird's eye map of where stuff flows out topographically and all, and then right would the land trust kind of work with the land owners to say are you amenable to allowing no, no building here or some sort of I don't well, know, how the, does that the work problem the problem is that um, the agricultural preservation restriction money um, only provides for agricultural land that is developable and right. most of your land that's in the floodplain that we'd be looked at is not considered developable so what the match is that Chris is talking about is Tom Curran the new executive director for um, Franklin Land Trust came to our meeting and he said he would be willing to work with us to find private money you know f from other private nonprofits and that's where the match is from and, and that private money is what to purchase land to buy the development right to buy the conservation restriction because it wouldn't really be gotcha. development rights because there's no real development right value so it would be to an, an offer to a them. sort of development it, it would be the the uh, equal amount of what if you were trying to develop that land. So in other words, it would be a good value, but you would be able to put a conservation restriction on it, and therefore it would not be buildable. Like the South Meadows where it flooded, but you know, is, is that it, bend, or the North Meadows my, up in the bend. My naive floods. thinking is, is it not buildable already? So why would we want to offer them money if, it, if they can't build well, it? The, you may find land that actually is buildable. Because what, what happens is you're guaranteeing that you're having access to that floodplain when you have these events. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, build up, if you build them up, then you have no longer, ha and that water is going somewhere else. Right. And so somewhere else that's not flooding would now be flooded. The wa water mm -hmm. has to go somewhere. Right. So what you're trying to do is, is to, Allow there's a places. mutual goal of this is the best top 5% soil in the whole world is there. Mm -hmm. But guess what? It floods every, every other spring. So if you allow that to flood every other spring, then, and then have these catastrophe every few years, then you have the opportunity of keeping that water there versus moving in it the to river and down in somebody's neighborhood. somebody else's it's mm -hmm. someone's home right. you know which is where you're trying okay. to avoid just so you know that about 15 to 20 years ago this town spent more than a million dollars buying development rights in floodplain lands hmm. so. well it just wasn't trivia. Oh, it, it wasn't <laughs> floodplain of course it, it was, was it wasn't floodplain there was still development it, no, if the, if it, the APR the, program paid money the, into it, the people at the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments mapping thing, what's his name? I can't think. Of, he, I got the maps on the wall. Every other year, it floods, according to them. Well, so. all I'm saying is that if the APR program paid for the property, there was developmental value, and therefore it was buildable, and it was not considered oh, floodplain. Like okay. <laughs> but look at right. the parcels so at least that it's we protected are now. Yes. 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 Good Parts investment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, it's the idea is to be more proactive on this. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you for the work on that. Oh, sure. So, so, so there's just a couple things that we need to do in order to submit this tomorrow. Um, Carolyn 
I guess, would need to sign off on the actual grant application. You, uh, have, you don't have that right now, do you? Well, I can print it if, um, if Diana, if you can give me access to a printer, we can, we can print the actual signature page so that you don't have to do that in the morning. And then there's also a certification of local match form, which I have, um, that we can print out for your signature. Okay. It shows basically the same numbers that you see here, but it sort of also gives the detail of who's providing that, that match. Mm -hmm. So it's a um, combination of uh, Diana's time, uh, DPW superintendent, some volunteer time fr from you folks in included in that. Um, EMD. And Lori, when did you when get Lori's? <laughs> what did date you is get that? Lori's um, resume, <laughs> Lori um, McCombs' light resume? Um, I did not yet. Oh, but, okay. Um, she's she's sending it. Okay. But she yeah. would have to be under the volunteer rate too. Okay, that's what I that's what I've got okay. in the form. So anyway, those two things just need to be signed off on, okay. and then if you guys could put together a letter of support from the board, I don't know if that's you had time to take a look at that possibility yet, but maybe we can. Uh, well, we I'm sure that, that up in the morning. Diane, <laughs> Diane, you want to do it on that same support letter that you sent. That's the basis for it, sure, but I think I, making well, it, it a little it more a little personalized. Bit, yeah, yeah, it would be nicer if it was just a little bit juiced up because everybody else is based. Because it seemed like that was you asking from for somebody board. else yeah. to support it, so yeah. I was right. a little okay. Right. So, all right. Are you are you going to be in um, in the morning yes. tomorrow? Yeah. Maybe we can you know, finalize something at that point. Okay. Yeah, because some of these things, I, I don't know if this was your final, you've got to, we've got to fill in some of this information still. Right? You still have to fill in some of this information. Oh, you have a, I have a draft. That's, I don't a, that's an older version. Okay, I wasn't I, sure. I have finished that. Okay. I'm All sorry, right. I, I emailed it to you, but you were probably already in the, in the, the okay. meeting tonight. I All didn't right. realize you were going in so early. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, so we're, okay. we're getting close, but I've, I've got to finish the rest of the application tonight so that <laughs> we can finish. Now, Diana, would you be it. around tomorrow? Because yep. I'll do the what letter Chris of support. is going to do is, is he needs to mail us out overnight mm -hmm. to make sure it gets there in time? Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I make mm -hmm. a motion that we um, support this grant application. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, um, I will make a motion that we um, send a support letter with this application. Second that. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. What, what happens, Chris, if uh, the land trust doesn't come through with their $20,000? Um, ideally, we would want to know that um, before we submit, but okay. if they can't at some point, I, I guess once if there is an award of a grant, we would negotiate a contract with the OEEA. We might drop that task out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. All right. I, I, Tom is, is new, but I've, I've been working with him through um, another grant opportunity. So I, I feel it pretty comfortable that he, when he committed his time, that he would follow yeah. through. Good. All right. Well, thank you. We're all set. Thank you very right. much. Yeah, appreciate thank it. Thank you very much for all your work on um, the town's behalf next, lately. Could you, could you get that, Diana, to print that off? Yeah, I'll yeah. get it, and I'll, um, you're going to sign it, basically? Yeah. Because I'm going to see him tomorrow, so I'll just give it to him tomorrow. Is that okay? Okay, the, perfect. The next item on our okay? agenda for 6.15, we're only an hour and 10 minutes it, late. Um, Age-friendly designation and request for reactivation of the Council on Aging to Act as Senior Advisory Committee, Lisa White, Regional Public Health Nurse, and Christine Johnson, Director of South County Senior Center. I'm Welcome sorry, ladies. I'm, ladies, I'm so sorry that it, it's taken all evening. Understood. <laughs> we appreciate your time. Yes. Oh. One thing I'm not clear on is how to advance the slides from here. Can I sit there and sure. do it? Yeah, is you that, can sit I'll there and just try to speak it. loudly so that. So, Uh, so what we're uh, here asking tonight is for the select board to consider its application, but it's really a designation of the town of Deerfield as the first age-friendly community um, in Franklin County. It's a, it's a statewide, nationwide, and worldwide initiative. Um, our application, if you sign a letter of support tonight, would go into the AARP and um, 
we would be affiliated with um, the Massachusetts Healthy Aging Collaborative and other communities, of which there are many in the state of Massachusetts who are taking this step on. So I have about 10 slides here that I hope will help illustrate what this community initiative is all about. Um, it's a response to the baby boom generation coming of age, retirement age, with that first crest of the wave starting in 2010, projected out to 2035, when the last edge of that population boom um, hmm. reaches age 70. Um, and this is statistics that were projected from the Donahue Institute at UMass of the town of Deerfield. And it's consistent with the town census that's taken and we'll get more data as we get to the 2000 census. But essentially, the population of adults over the age of 65 in Deerfield in 2010 were 800. We're currently um, at near 1,400 and expected to be at 1,800 individuals over the age of 65 in the year 2035. And Deerfield is not any much different from other communities. Um, and statistically, just to note, the other age populations of children and younger adults stay about the same or even decline slightly in this time period. It's the older folk generation that is doing the growth. I actually think that's conservative. Probably. <laughs> I really do. This is a national um, statement that 10,000 people turn 65 every day. And it's just asking, you know, so what are communities doing about it? And it turns out there are some actions that communities can be taking to be prepared for this growth in the years ahead. The Age-Friendly Community Network that we're asking for your support in joining was established by the World Health Organization in, I think, 2009. The AARP, as I mentioned, is the national affiliate, and there's a group organized under the state, Healthy Aging Collaborative, um, that is supporting this endeavor. The benefit of the town joining the um, Age-Friendly Network is that we have access to aging experts, uh, partnership and mentorship with other communities who are thinking about these issues and it's a potential link to grant resources nothing guaranteed but my work right now on this project is funded through a grant that the Council of Governments received for healthy aging projects it's the same funding we use to involve older adults in a walkability assessment of the downtown and yeah. common area this summer um, and what it's engaging the town in is a process of expected length of about five years, where the community looks to its older adult population for input on an assessment of how we're doing in terms of age friendliness, and then sets some priorities and goals for the future. There are some close by examples. Um, Berkshire Region has taken it on as a collaborative um, event. We expect that what we would do here locally could re be replicated in other communities easily. And this is a process that could be adapted to large communities as well as small. This is the concept that the World Health Organization came up with, and they use the petals of a flower to describe what makes an age-friendly community. Our process would be to, with a group of individuals, committed volunteers who are already concerned with aging issues um, and other key stakeholders to look at each one of these areas and help try to define it um, clearly for where the town of Deerfield currently sits. I thought I'd leave that graphic up. It's kind of difficult to read, but I know that Christina has some thoughts about it, Diana perhaps, and others about how these areas of concern might be applicable in the community. Um, well, I obviously, I mean, I'm the director of the Senior Center, which would obviously be a part of any kind of age-friendly um, yep. designation. Um, but that's where, you know, community support comes in and, um, you know, social inclusion and things like that. Um, I've mentioned it briefly to um, 
some of the people, you know, some of the uh, seniors at the center, and I have, you know, already gotten interest, and people have ideas, so that was good to see. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the center itself obviously take <laughs> it's a few of those different pedals, you know, social participation. Um, I, I mentioned social inclusion, community support, um, you know, um, Built, and obviously the building, which is a whole <laughs> other topic, but um, hopefully the data kind of put, emphasizes that point too. I, uh, mm -hmm. I'm putting my plug in for the building as I always do. <laughs> I'll just tag on to that to say that there's a suggestion in the collaborative's work that to have this designation prior to large community processes is important because it sets you up for the kind of community involvement you want in a right. project that's going to affect that population particularly. Mm -hmm. Also, I think it also will help us um, connect some of these grants because I look at complete streets. We really want more walkability, more sociability downtown. Mm -hmm. So having, you know, um, handicap accessible sidewalks and um, you know crosswalks and, and coordinating with everybody on everything is is huge, and this gives us an opportunity. We can say that we're doing this, and then we can maybe leverage more money under the complete streets, and then maybe go after some other stuff because you know we're still trying to work on the building. <laughs> and it, um, it may it may also kind of get get this group of people, citizens involved, and the stakeholders involved to start looking at the things that we have neglected to do so far as far as ADA compliance. You know, there's there's a lot that needs to happen in town around ADA accessibility that, that we, re, you know, we have, a, we have somebody kind of appointed, but we really need a group of people together to start looking at that. I, I think of constituting our, our um, COA again, which I yes. think is part of your discussion as well. And um, Well, we were hoping to get some landscape money too because we wanted to make a walking, you know, loop between the li you know, behind the mm. senior center and the church and the library and, you know, around the ball field here and have it be a safe place and, you know, level place to walk, like a walking path with some benches so people could go, like, from bench to bench kind of mm. thing. I mean, there were several different things that we were Good looking ideas. at. Yeah. Yeah. We just yeah. need to coalesce them. <laughs> yeah, and so this would maybe be able to, us to um, organize them in a way that we could leverage some money, which is... You know, to actually do the stuff, which right. is really I think good. it's really important too. I mean, Christina and I have been working since she got here, and um, you know, she's she's in a, 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 a unique position in that she is advocating for seniors in three different communities or working with seniors from three different communities. I look at this as that you know, we I I think we need to advocate for for Deerfield seniors, mm -hmm. and all of these components are things that we're looking at just in general, and we've mm -hmm. been talking about planning these things for the future, and to be focused on looking at it toward the population that is growing the most rapidly in this community and many communities. You know, I think it makes perfect sense to to start that process. What, one question I had was, what are the unintended consequences whenever you take an action sometimes there's like oh i didn't see that now we're going to have to do this or you know think of stormwater or whatever <laughs> you know things that we we deal with there may be none here i just like to just always have a full kind of 360 degree view of something joining this or designating this doesn't commit us to anything specific monetarily or does this does what, what where the what's the kind of scope of the project sure it's um it's it's Merely, but it's a, it's a sincere intention Absolutely. to engage the community in this five-year process. Great. Um, to make an assessment, identify priorities, and establish goals. And some of those goals can be long-term, mm -hmm. and some of them could be what they call quick wins. Yep. Um, such as, you look at a pedal like um, communication. How are we disseminating information about public meetings that occur? Right. We know that from statistics that Tufts health has generated that 30% of older adults don't have access to the internet. They don't right. use that as a medium to gain information. Right. So are we, are we taking the proper steps? And those are probably very easy steps to make. No yep. cost, low cost. Steps. Right. So there's right. things that I think you can consider in this kind of a process that don't get at the longer term 
issues. They won't, but what you'll get is some feedback from the community that those services currently serve or will serve in the future right. in an organized way that hopefully will make some right. sense. You of know what? I, I, you brought up communication. Um, you know, we're, we have uh, a, a, an application for $10,000 for this switching over from code red to rave system. So that would give us some mailing costs and outreach costs to seniors who might not be able to, we might not be able to reach. So we could use some of this money, right. maybe left over, yeah. <laughs> um, to reach out and get, make sure they're signed up for the emergency mm -hmm. system. Yeah. And, and, and that would accomplish this task, but also then we could accomplish some way of connecting them to you know what we're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. you know. I, mean, I think so, it's just that kind of thinking yeah. that yeah. this is meant to kind of Unleash right. and yep. organize. Right. I think it's a great idea. But it would be a good, great way to. We. I mean, hopefully, we'll have funding in a few weeks that we could pursue this with. Yes. Well, we continue to move through. Sure. There a final Thank you. Comment? I just wanted to say one other thing about the transportation pedals. Mm -hmm. Also, oh. something Diane and I have been, uh, you know, working on, and, and which. I'm sure everyone agrees. You know, is is just lacking in general, and yep. in. Um, so that's already something that we, you know, we're in discussion a lot about, and we've met with, you know, FRTA, and, and of course, again, because of the three communities, PV today is also involved in um, yep. what I do. But but that's another thing we're, you know, we were already working on and trying to, um, you know, come to some s solutions to. So it was, it's nice that that's also part of this. Right. So. I just want to add to your point. Mm -hmm. I think the one, the, the unintended consequence, I think, is going to be that we're going to have to also think of how the other folks that, um, you know, participate with our elders, the other communities through the center, yep. um, you know, how we can integrate that piece. Because right. because Christina is, is in, Absolutely. as I said, she's dealing with not just Deerfield seniors, but um, seniors from these other communities. So we, we right. had, when we had our planning meeting, we talked about how we will, you know, try to work with those communities as well, peripherally, to make sure there, there's some inclusion in that you know, process. Before you leave the flower, Christine, I have a question. What, what do you hear is the biggest concern of our seniors? What do they seem to be most worried about, concerned? And <laughs> well, the, of the of the people at the center, it's the actual building <laughs> by far. But um, transportation is up there, um, mm -hmm. brought up a lot. Um, and these are... Um, you know, people that act by, by and far are driving to the center. So for them personally, it's not even necessarily um, a, a problem. But but I hear, you know, oh, so-and-so would like to be coming mm -hmm. and can't because there's no transportation. And, and I get probably at least one uh, call a week from somebody that's having, you know, transportation issues. Mm -hmm. so, you know, or so if it's a program I, at I, night. I don't understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Berniston has... Um, two vans yes, they do. and they have regular pickups for everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how, how do we apply for money for that? I mean, how do we get at least, I mean, we're, we have potential for much bigger, um, I mean, because we're regional, number one, mm -hmm. so, and we have a much better, bigger geographic area. So, I mean, I would foresee us at least getting four or five vans. So how, how do we not have any? What, what do we have to do to get some? Um, I realize you have to train drivers. Drivers yeah, have to right. be trained. There, there we have to pay, but yeah. the insurance once, issue. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but once we yeah. get, I mean, we yeah, can deal have with to, that. There's, but there's how some, do we get the vans to begin? There's with? a grant. There's a grant I think through Elder Services that you can apply for the transportation, or there you can get a grant for a van for acquiring a van. And there's but still as Christina said, there's there's the matter of then running it and operating it and having right. the driver and Which all that. So there is more budget. to it. There, and yeah, I'm not sure if we could get, we are trying to make sure we have the appropriate level of service through FRTA, which is our demand response service. Um, as Christina said, that there's communities in the center that aren't served by FRTA, they're served by the PBTA. PBTA. So that's a little more complicated yeah. because I can go to FRTA because I'm in Deerfield and FRTA is Franklin County, um, but we're not, you know, I we haven't gone to, to PBTA. And they don't work together. That they way. don't. Yeah. And the, and <laughs> oh, the two RTAs that. aren't ideally working together no. as seamlessly as we would like. Right. right. Here. That's a better yeah, way to put it. The program to us right now is to help answer these questions. Exactly. Yes. 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 Exactly. So we don't yeah. need to hash around. I mean, you're, you're, you're looking to get us involved in the program that would actually help us. 
Yeah, yeah but I, I was just... <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to know how come... Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, there's... No, but it, no, it drives me crazy that it's a small town of Burniston can have vans, and then we, we don't have vans. We've talked to Diana Cornwell about that, so we do have some answers to that. But. Yes. We did some of the uh, budget meetings with Christina and other towns yep. and kind of put it out there to them, stand by. Yeah, we'd like an appropriation for some. At some point for this. Yep. Yeah. Um, we good. have seniors in our towns, in, in the other two towns that join our center, um, but we can't get them there. Yeah. And they're, they're looking for numbers for Christina right. and us guys, but um, personally, we have to put them in our vehicles and take them to yeah. Franklin County Tech for lunch. Yeah, um, this, this might sound a little odd, but... Pancake cake breakfast recently. Yeah. That Which is also is an insurance issue. The rest of us, because if one of them gets hurt... Right, falls, exactly. Yes. Are, so we're looking for a van down the road. Um, that I, I think we absolutely got to stay on that, because okay. I think and that's huge. Unfortunately, I guess we all know it. Um, our seniors tend to fall through the cracks because there's so much going on right now in our town between schools and the sewer system and everything else, we kind of keep getting pushed a little back further and further. Um, we just, with Lisa and this program, kind of looking forward to some good things happening. Yeah, yes. so yeah. it's starting to move that way and I think we've done some work lately in the last year and I'm um, really excited to have Christina working with us to move that stuff forward and, and hopefully we can constitute the COA again and get, get rolling on this. I what I was going to ask is, do a lot of seniors have a difficult time getting into vans? Or would, they be, would it be easier for them to get into cars? Oh, well, actually, I don't have an answer to that necessarily. And with, with uh, self-driving cars, there's all, the, the whole thing is changing. Yeah, In the next 10 years, it's going to be a whole different world. I do know I never can drive anyone because yeah. no one can get into my Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> so I never can contribute to the driving. Right. But, um, so, no, that's a good I point. I actually, I, I don't. Because vans know. are usually high and, you know, it's. Right. They have accessible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know, Down. but so yeah. it's still, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, well. Go ahead. Moving on. on. Just a few more to um, describe what we're planning. The resources we have on hand are, we have good data sources. Um, we work with the Mass Council on Aging. Um, we have the South County Senior Survey that was conducted in 2011, and though that's getting old, it still has some really good mm -hmm. um, information about the concerns of the older adults in the community served by the Senior Center. And we did have the um, asset of having a um, intern in um, Amanda Calvo in 2017. She worked through the summer um, to provide a preliminary assessment of Deerfield status regards to age friendliness. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good basic document for a group to move forward with. Sorry. Christina and I are committed to helping with the process. We have key stakeholders who we know would join us in that effort. Thank you. In the back row. And, um, <laughs> There is some discussion with the board uh, about establishing the yes. Council on Aging. That would be a perfect group to give some structure to their regular agendas, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and we'd get the benefit of them moving us through this uh, five-year process. Again, we'd be there to staff support it. Um, we could hold community forums in that um, format. And again, again, as I mentioned, this could be a template for the region, for other communities, whether small or large, to embark on this endeavor too. So tonight we're asking for your signature on a letter of intent um, that I hope you have before you. Um, we would conduct an assessment in a time frame of about two years, and then an action plan about year three, and implement some things, the quick wins sooner, Certainly, mm -hmm. but um, s some objectives in years three to five, and our evaluation would be ongoing. And that's, that's all I have to present. That's great. That's good. Thank you. Um, would you be able, once we um, get the RFQ back from um, our building um, assessment um, process, 
would you be able to meet with um, whoever is hired so that we could, you could have input into what the reuse of some of the buildings are and the needs? Um, because, I mean, what we're trying to do is evaluate the senior center of the church, you know, and other buildings in town and what to do with them. So would you be willing, based on this, to meet with whoever we end up hiring? Certainly willing, and I, you know, I, yeah. I think that okay. if the town has this body and this process, I then agree. whoever comes into those kind of planning efforts would be yeah. glad to hook in with the people who they're working for. And we also have Diane Cornwell's um, you yes. know, assessment that we can use yes. that as some data to pull from here and there. I know she did some work on no, that. I so. haven't seen that. Uh, mm -hmm. We should. I'll get can that you, to you. Can you get me yep. that? Yeah, I want to make sure that's not doesn't fall through. Oh the cracks, no, no, yeah, so. yeah, no. Absolutely. I haven't read the. Okay, we'll so I would be really <laughs> interested. Yeah, thank Jeff, you. Just a quick comment, and, and more or less out of curiosity, I was just wondering if if there's been visitations or could there be visitations to some of the newer senior centers that have been, have been built, like in Greenfield and Northampton, to see what their attendance is, what the draw is draw is what programs the seniors are attending and you know for age friendly and that Different and just to get some ideas of where where Deerfield kind of stacks up what what we're offering or what we could be offering yeah. or maybe what we shouldn't be offering and get a better idea and if we want to try to increase I, I know you said attendance and there's mm -hmm. a lot of reasons for attendance yeah. but uh, I'm just, I'm just thinking when I look at that building over there, and, and I hate to say it, I'm a senior, but I probably <laughs> would visit that building maybe after I'm in the ground. But, but you know, I, I don't know, and I hope I'm not speaking on a term. Uh, I no. know there's, you know, no. some seniors that love the building and others that really don't particularly care for it. I'm just wondering if that's a deterrent or not. Because they definitely, when you take a look at some of these so-called senior centers now, they're offering a whole lot of different things than yeah. what the old senior centers were. Yeah. It's a yeah, we want a different to, world out there now. More so just intergenerational and community yeah, right. space. Yeah, just, Absolutely. Just, my mosquito. More our a field trip. My mosquito yeah, commission important. meets. Um, I, we meet in Northfield's. Uh, I mean Northampton's senior center and. It is, it is vastly different. different. <laughs> yes. And there's a lot of different uses in there, not just the Mosquito Commission, but. Uh, quite a few of our seniors are heading to Irving. Uh, I, apparently, they like the new, they like to play off. Oh, <laughs> and, and I haven't been there yet, but um, I know There's quite a Surprisingly, there's quite a few. Um, when Trevor and I went there, we uh, up to Berniston, there's quite a few Deerfield people that go to yes. Berniston. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm, I was very surprised. Some of that's about going. To a, the access is a whole lot easier. Yeah. yeah. No, Berniston. People in and out. Berniston is the old high school. Yes. yes. Powers Institute, and that was renovated. That's a good example. That's like the perfect example if, if that was the route the town was going to go, because that, that's exactly what they did. They re Just like us, we, it's in an old school and they renovated it, so. Yeah, but I was really surprised. Well, thank you guys for. Yes, yes. I make a motion we um, sign the letter of support. A second the motion. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Very good. Well, thank you very much. Right, <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thank you. For I'm coming sorry out. Thanks for staying. So okay. Yes. <laughs> thanks for staying so yeah, long tonight thank you too. So much. Yeah, and Lisa's done a lot of great work on this, so I just I know. Yeah, thank so we you, mentioned Lisa. that. Thank yeah. you, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lisa, very much. I'm sorry you had to stay. Yes, yes. Yep. I'll give it to you if you want. Do you need a signature? Oh, copy that. Copy. Okay. <laughs> okay, no, I'll let you keep it. I to give up and walk. Yes, I know. I'm exhausted.
The next item on our agenda is to review the fiscal year annual town meeting motions and budgets with the finance committee recommendations. I'm just speaking with Diane this afternoon. Diane this afternoon, I I think we were going to bypass that and maybe do a joint do a joint meeting. Yes. Oh, I was. Yes. I'm sorry. You're on to the motions. Yeah, we were on to the motions. To get to the finance committee meeting last night, as you were aware. So. Um, they are rescheduled for Tuesday, Skip told me, so I didn't know if you wanted to have a meeting next week or if you wanted to could, join them. Could we make a joint meeting so it's not like everybody's running out like two or three times? Who are you asking? <laughs> you. I want your is, microphone. Is, that, is Jeff? Oh, is Jeff, oh I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Jeff and um, I was going to say, I don't think Skip's next, here to say. Would it be okay to have a joint meeting? I know you, you know, you're only two m members, but. It just makes sense to have. I think, I mean, I think Skip had invited you originally. Yeah. Could we have a joint meeting with you with on the, the 23rd? the finance committee to go over the motions next week, next Tuesday? With the finance committee? Rather than have, have two meetings next week. We, we are meeting the 23rd. Tuesday. Yep. This coming Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Yes. So we were wondering if we could make it joint and we could do this, mo go over the motions together. I, I'm not chairperson. I'm only one I member of the, of the board, but it would seem are you to open? make sense. <laughs> well, that's what we were wondering, we if you're members. open. Are we, are we open? Sense to me. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So, so why don't we just do it? It's a majority. Like, we're not majority. Right. You, you, you may well, want you can to. Bruce me. said it's okay. <laughs> you may want this. Right. We're going to tell Skip, okay. we'll email Skip and say, oh, man, guess what? We're, this is what we're, we're crashing do. your right. party. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank I, you. It makes more sense than to it have two. It does. Thank you. Because then, then you all have to come and out And if there's Wednesday any discussion or questions, they can sorry, be answered. Sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Call from you. <laughs> is that okay? All right. So Tuesday, Tuesday six at 6 o'clock. Yes. Yeah. You okay. may want to check with Skip as far as the posting on that. Yep. We can do that. Somebody just send Make him sure an email posted. or a phone call or something. Diana yep. can oh, follow up we'll tomorrow. Do. Yep. No. Well. That's plenty of time. Yep. Okay. All righty. So we're going to pass that over. Yep. Um, okay. Review and discuss the draft charge for the sewer study committee. Okay, that was that. That's right after. So, yeah. you had asked me um, to put together something. This is very preliminary. I used some of the content that was in your previous um, draft, but I sort of just. I've it's it's right after the MVP discussion. Yes, that's sewer it. Study, it says sewer study committee at the top draft. It's just a short one page. Is it your other pile over there? No, uh, maybe. It's right after that one. Here, I have an extra coffee, I think. If you need it. Yep, just right in between. Okay. Oh, right yep. here. Okay. okay, thanks. All right. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so I left the first couple of things. I rearranged the order, and I started with, um, you know, to listen, research independently, engage with consultant, and recommend within the context of planning efforts, strategies. You know, you can see that. Um, then I had put, to, you had in something like this, similarly to work with consultant to comprehensive comprehensively review information reports. Um, then I had put to research available Diana, funds grants. I hate to interrupt you, but could, could you sure. just, uh, can we just give a copy to um, oh, sure. um, the yeah, three absolutely. out here yeah. so that you guys can look at it? Yeah. So, I'm, I, you, I appreciate you, you sticking around. Oh, so I, I, I'm going to move up closer so I can hear it. Well, it's, it's come on up. Why don't you move up to this table? Yeah, you don't have to be in the back row. Just come right on up. Well, she has she left her glass. Voice, so I know. She's been she needs not to been that up feeling well, closer. too. So we don't want her screaming too much. She might. Well, we'll leave her alone. Even a <laughs> She just hasn't been feeling well. <laughs> it's a lot easier. Do you, see, I'm loud in general, so you know, it doesn't. I'm the same way. You notice that? I know, but <laughs> Diana, you're in trouble now. I harass you. You're just saying your voice is too soft. We can't hear you. I know. I just, just drag that thing really close. Make believe you're a singer, a rock star, <laughs> and it's going to be right near your lips. I'm not feeling like a rock star today. Mostly, I do, but not today. Um, just looking over this real quick, I was just wondering. Do you, 
maybe opinions do do we think to research available funds grants and other monies is that something that you're interested in tackling i mean i think we know the two avenues we have if you want to research though i just didn't know if I, i'm looking for more technical stuff but i don't know if that i think they makes could, sense to you I think you have the capacity. It doesn't hurt to have another set of eyes. Right. It's, it's, it's free money. Like, it's zero cost. No, I right? get <laughs> I get it. But I'm just wondering how much time you'd, I mean, like, it, I only understand there's two avenues for money. How many people are on the board? Five, six? There's seven. But seven. To be quite honest with you, I'm not so sure that some of these are within our purview as far as being capable of doing things. Right? You know, well, so. you want to go down one by well, one and just see? Well, let's go over the list so that you get your input. if you have any problem with because I, I think the, pro the thing is we want, we want to work together on this and we really need help. So, um, because it's so, I mean, it's very complex and it's a lot of money, so. Well, to be honest with you, uh, obviously I, I believe, this is just my opinion, that Eric and Josh definitely uh, have a leg up on, on several of us as far as what I'm seeing here. And but but that's why it's wonderful because you know they they can talk things through with right. each other and everybody else so that you know we're making what we need is informed decision and we need to make sure that every avenue has been looked at as to far you know how do we keep the cost down you know what are we going to do so in, in regards to this it may not be that each individual is capable of doing everything, but as a group, I think we're very capable. I guess is where I was going. Disseminating with that. and so, so yes, I agree. Josh and I could handle any of the any of the scope engineering design build process. I'm not afraid of at right, all. Right, exactly. Right, so it's actually right up our alley. And but but as far as researching the grants or doing some of that, I think you know other people on the on the on the committee may be more mm -hmm. you know geared towards that. And as a team. You, you delegate your responsibilities, right? You, you, so that way it gets accomplished. Mm -hmm. and so well, that's what's so effective because, you know, uh, Eric and Josh, they have a lot of the technical background, but they also have full-time jobs mm -hmm. uh, where maybe Jeff and Bruce have a little bit more discretionary time. So, you know, if Eric and Josh say, you know, hey, we need to look into this, you know, Bruce might say, okay, well, tomorrow I can, I've got some time in the afternoon I can do that. You know, so his statement is they work together is, is exactly how and also, teams function. You're forgetting and so, it's golf season for yeah. me. <laughs> but also, Bruce, you know, it, it, sometimes it's just making a few phone calls to oh, the yeah. state and you I, get you pawned know, off to somebody else, but you don't give up, and then all of a sudden you get some answers. And there again, you know, I, I, I really don't want to comment a whole lot on this. Uh, I would, you know, uh, just reading it through and appreciate your asking, but, uh, you know, without the whole group sitting down and discussing it with the committee mm -hmm. to see whether you know so it would be up to you to you know if you want to charge I know, but us we're asking with this your input we're asking for your input but and you, you're looking for it. more because we want to move ahead group talk and so, then give input is that well what you i well i, I th you know i think you need to direct us we will look at this as a group and say look at this is looks like it's within our purview, this is not. Or we have mm -hmm. to try to find somebody that we think could be brought into the committee that might be a little more appropriate for some of this. Um, you know, there's, at this point in time, I don't really know how many members are still interested in of being course. on it. Of okay, course, so, They may or may not uh, be. You know, this is a good start, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I wish we'd seen something like this previously and we could be on rolling at this point. And I'm not criticizing anybody, but uh, you know, I would want to sit. I, you know, before I make points for comments, I really would like to talk sure. to the other six individuals and. and I agree. And look at this. To take take the draft and call a meeting Absolutely. and, yep. and review it See who amongst shows the and committee. Where you want to go? Yep. Okay. You know, so you know, if this is something, at this point, I would say if this is something satisfactory to the select board. Well, we give us the I approval so and then we I haven't discussed this. I haven't looked so, at this yet either so, so we'll just my opinion and I'm not I hate to, to listen I, I I'm a project manager I'm a type A personality this is perfect let's move forward let's get it done this is where I would go I apologize yep. no, 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 no. <laughs> difference of opinion but this is exactly what I expect to look at and again the whole point is to give you guys something informed to make a decision on so you can sign the dotted line with with someone that's got the best interest of the town for first and foremost right so and, you're comfortable with this yeah I read well, it already it's good Okay. Well, <laughs> but that's me. But, uh, yeah, but, we, haven't, but, we haven't really yeah. discussed but that. But that's just one of so, you guys have to talk about it. A couple so I just want to get it going and, and you yeah. know, listen, 
I managed work for 20 years. I, 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 I this, this is what we do. And mm -hmm. I, I, I will say this, we, we move forward. We don't look, look backwards, but at the same token, these guys are maybe a little bit more reserved and, and you know, so taking into account what they're saying, I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm ready to it's go. Fine. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with this either, but it's up there. It's only my opinion. And, and there's six other people. And I may too. So, I, you know, I would we, we yeah, look so at that's, this. I mean, so I just want to say, I mean, you, you, um, there's a couple other things. I mean, Welcome I didn't know if you wanted this, this group to be a group that helps you to educate the public. I've worked with, with building groups or study committees, feasibility study committees that end up being a also sort of a communications committee or can help you with that process, either you know reporting to you. You could have also them reporting to town meeting as you know necessary or applicable. These are just suggestions, I'm just saying. Um, the other for thing you talked for discussion, because yeah. you asked me to draft something and you didn't didn't really entirely agree even on sort of the concept yeah, yeah. so it was very difficult for me to come up you know I mean I, I used you know what you had previously mostly but um, also I want to mention you you talked a little bit about the committee um, struggling with reaching consensus or building consensus so mm -hmm. sometimes I've been part of processes where committees where the board will have part of the committee charges that you have to reach consensus like whatever decisions or recommendations you're making they must be built out of consensus a lot of times what does happen if you don't build cons if you can't have a committee that builds consensus then they don't they aren't advantageous to you and that's what you I don't know if that's exactly what happened before but uh, it seemed sure. like I know there was some, you know, among the committee there was some lack of, of agreement. I, I don't, I, can, I don't know I can, how, I don't know how much that impacted the, the ability I, to. I can explain on that, and it, it's very unfortunate. Uh, I think there was a good committee. I think there was a lot of consensus and a lot of avenues. What it got down to, every discussion that uh, the committee got down to, was well, what are suggestions for being paid? At that point, the committee split up. And it was, you could see it getting heated, and it would drop. And it was over money every time until this legislation was drawn up that said the town is responsible for 25% and the user is responsible for 75%. At that point, it got that money issue off the table. Mm -hmm. okay. But unfortunately, at that point in time, the select board took it in their hands. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm not being critical. Uh, we wallowed for a year and a half. Uh, but this is what this is what the non-consensus was. It was not because of some of the ideas mm -hmm. and so forth. Okay. It was who's going to pay for it, and that created arguments. And uh, so it, it never got any, never got any farther. Oh, okay. Hopefully, this is that's all, now that that's off the table, and we have two very, as Jeff said, more. I know they're more qualified than I am. Uh, you know uh, that uh, can help us guide along to the point after we got to a certain point we were really unqualified to go any farther we all knew a lot but not right. enough to make a good solid recommendation mm -hmm. so it was not a lack of consensus we just didn't know how to make a very good recommendation and I think with Josh and Eric on board uh, I think I think it uh, should probably be able to turn the committee around and be useful to the town as well as the well, well, there is a so lot, commissioners. Right. And there is a large learning curve there, yes, too, there for all of us, for the committee and that. Yep. And we we weren't only focused on the South Deerfield plant. Right. We were also talking Old Deerfield plant, what was right. going to stay, what was going to go. And so, it is so even though it appeared that we were stumbling, I feel that the committee actually made some pretty decent progress to get us to the point of where uh, the select board got involved. And, and at least at that point, we knew we had to do something differently than what the committee was trying to do. And I think everybody on that committee admitted to that, that we had hit the point where we just couldn't move forward at that point. And I was wondering in this, um, I, I I know we can amend a, you know, um, a charge other times. I was thinking, should we, um, at this point, knowing what we're doing now, should we focus you know, strictly on South Deerfield and our upcoming uh, projects so it's not bogged down in a, in a large, you know, should we pipe it, should we go to Greenfield? I think there's time for that later, and it needs to happen yeah. later. I but I want actionable information on 
kind of about the roadmap we've got laid out may change based on input from everybody, but um, if we could focus on South Deerfield plant, maybe collections around that or collections well, later, but just you, kind of narrow so. up. You've got four phases. So we handle phase one, then we handle phase two, then we handle phase three. You build it out sequentially and, and you go that route. You mentioned something about consensus. Listen, we're, we're going to put things together. If we can't agree on something, we just bring you both of those things. Mm -hmm. You guys are the select board in the end, right? right? You need no. to make informed decisions based on background information. If we have yeah. differing opinions, we say that, we state it, you hear it. Right. In the end, you guys are the ruling entity that makes the decision. So if we if we can't come to a consensus on a recommendation, we say that, and here's our options. Okay. Right. So I don't think it should be a stumbling point. I'm not, yeah. how can I say this? I, I don't think that it should be a stumbling point, but what, what happened for me on that study committee, as Bruce said, we, we, we talked about so many different things. Mm -hmm. and there were so many great ideas. Um, halfway through or three quarters of the way through, in my mind, I saw a path. It was, and I didn't try to convince other people. You know, I just kept taking in the information. Then I brought the information back to the select board. And the, the problem that I saw is that I, I disseminated the information and gave my own input. But the, the select board had the exact same issue as the uh, uh, sewer study committee did. They didn't have enough knowledge of background to make that decision. Mm -hmm. So that's what led Still. to hiring an engineer. <clears throat> and, and, that, and that's why I said I was disappointed in this report is because although it does give us a, a plan, it only gives us one option, you know, and there's many. And so, you know, it's almost like that's what was disappointing to me because we don't have the opportunity to say, all right, well, this option A said we could do this, this, and this for this much money. Option B is we could do this, this, and this. And option C is this, this. And, you know, what is the timetable for it, you know? And my question yeah, on that, that though, is wouldn't that, you still, for that. wouldn't you still, um, I don't see as many options as you, and I could be just naive, and I, but I don't know if there's that many options based on kind of South Deerfield and kind of that plan. But well, so, so, so to what Kip's saying, and I looked at that, and I did, I looked at it cover to cover. You take that as a roadmap, there's a list of things that need, that, that want to get done, right? Mm -hmm. Think, and, and what I would like to have seen is what has to and what, what, what uh, we would like to, but it's not in there, that's fine. But if you do put it out, and I know it's at your discretion, if you do put it out for other engineers to, to give them the scope, tell them what they're going to do, then you get, then you get the, the, the differing options, right? And then they come to you and they give you the presentation. It's, it's an RFP, right, request for, for proposal. And they, they, they show you. They give you an idea of what they're going to lay out. This is what our plan is. This is what their plan is. This is what our cost of design. This is what our anticipated budget is, and vice versa. And you compare it, right? It may take, I don't even know if it takes that much extra time, but it's worth it because then you see the different options. You get two different views on it, or three. And this, this is how we do design build projects, right? It's best value, not necessarily low cost, right? Because it's based on a technical score and a cost score. But you, the, the whole thing is who can build the better mousetrap for the least amount of money. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're looking for. Well, the, the last one with Stantic, and maybe it's the way we wrote the RFP was the problem because we had two people come, the only two people mm -hmm. bid on it, and they, I don't know. I just, I didn't see a the, real The problem with difference. Stan Texas, I mean, I, I don't know that much, but I know that Springfield was relicensed, and they got relicensed without <coughs> a phosphorus add-on. And so that gives us at least five or ten years, and we're, you know, we're supposed to be promoting no-till and all that <coughs> kind of stuff. So our runoff potentially could be 10 or 15 years before we'd have the, and maybe never, get a phosphorus add-on to the sewer plant. But... Santec had had put on to the plan a million dollars for a phosphorus, hey, but you, well, you and that's the out. only thing that I didn't that I actually yeah. knew was not correct. And I was like, you know, I I didn't like that that they just rubber so the, stamped that. that so they, the other, why didn't they know that? The other part of it is when you're going through it, and I'm gonna tell you now, I've done these, I built these jobs, and I look at the designer and said, no, we're not gonna do it this way, we're gonna do it that way. And guess what? It's your prerogative because you're the owner. Right. It's your plant, and you tell them what you want to yeah, do. Yeah, but Eric, part of the problem is. I mean, I only knew that one thing because I had already been working on it so that we didn't get nailed for that. Mm -hmm. And like, I was worried already because they had been, DEP had been sampling the Deerfield River, so I was making sure that we didn't have that issue. 
and on, on the old Deerfield plant as well as the South Deerfield plant. And I'm like, well, why would they even propose that if I know that Springfield has been relicensed and we have this many number of years and it's not ma even making its way into Massachusetts from Connecticut, it's like halfway up the state. So why, but, why would they put that but, into uh, our proposal? Because normal but, people well, don't know that. Well, think about no, it. Just let's, let's get off the discussion of history. That's already yeah. passed. No, 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 I, but and, I'm saying no, why but, but going out the bid drives me crazy. Well, I understand, but it, it's history. Why do you know that? It's history, it still comes down to we are recommending committee. It goes to you, and if you have that information that we were not aware of, you still have the right to accept to or reject yep. any, any or all right. recommendations. But so, use us uh, as your workhorses, because like I, like I said before, you guys got a lot going yeah, on. Well, yeah. We'll get you the yeah. information, and if you see something you don't like, you right. take it. That's, right. that's, just, that's your prerogative. That's, that's why multiple people look at these projects. Right. You know, so, yeah. okay. uh, so as I said, I, I personally, I don't, see a, I don't see a problem with this at this point in time. But, uh, you know, I would. And would you, and uh, would you, and back to my point about focusing on South Deerfield, I know there's like one, two, yes. and three phase, or four phases, and we kind of shuffled them up recently. And if that's so what the one, sewer commissioners and, have decided at this point in time, do that phase they want to do phase one and three, look then at part of our charge should be only one and phase then once and that's one and three at this Eric point said, in time. You move on to the next well, again, okay. task. We're not really sure if that was the best option, but it made sense to us. And, and I guess. Well, there again, know, there again, based on everything the that was presented, uh, savings, uh, um, you know, the status. I don't know how, whether you know you read the it's your design critical plan. scores in the back of that book, uh, but you know, South Deerfield plant is half of it's red. Mm -hmm. you know? I know. <laughs> so, and then, and then, as you once you've decided on the designer, whichever one you decide on. Then you go through a design process. You have 30% plans, 60% plans, 90% plans, 100%, or you skip through some of those, however it is. And each time you review it and you analyze it and you decide, why are we doing it this way? We could do it this way. We could cut this out or we could not cut that right. out. We do it all the time. That's, yep. that's how you build it. Yep. And then that's where you have your other cost savings, right? So you have your designer on board, but you work with your designer to come up with the most efficient yet you know, design that meets what you're looking for in cost effective. And then, boom, then it goes out to bid, right? So in... in that's just, you know, the process. Mm -hmm. um, and and we, like I said, we bring it to you. We could do this or we could do this. Yep. And we show it to you. you know, it's a step-by-step -step process. Right. But, in, but what you, if you have someone that could lead it and push it, right. then you guys don't have to remember, oh, I've got a thousand things to do today. And, oh, I, got, I, forget, I didn't get a chance to do it. That's just what it is. This is our only charge is right. to do that. Okay. The phone calls you're talking about. I'm going to tell you right now, I know all about those phone calls. If you don't call and get someone on the phone and have them, you're not going to get them. Don't just send them an email, right? I got young engineers. I tell them that all the time. I don't care if you send them an email. You got to get on the phone and get yep. them here. So or drive it down face to face. Yeah, uh, th whatever it takes, right? But but if you guys are busy trying to handle the senior center and the school and the, whatever, it's 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 one of those things. It's just another thing on the pile. I, I recently learned of a company in Ohio. It's called Lakeside, and they're a, an engineering, design, and construction firm specifically for you know wastewater. And they, I, I talk very briefly with the, the people, and uh, they, they come in and they look at it and they, they give you a package. They create everything, everything is from them, and they just come in and do it. And I thought that was a, a pretty neat thing. So there's none of these conflicts like Eric was talking about before where, you know, the contract is this way and the designer is this way. They, they manage the whole thing, and it's done very quickly. Uh, I, you know, the guy says, oh, God, of course, everything changes. He says, Describe, I described kind of what we had, and he says, from start to finish, he says, you're looking at probably four to six months. He says, because when we ship everything, you know, everything's going to come complete, and, you know, so it's just another eye opener. It's like, wow, you know. Of course, he couldn't give me a, a price, but I mean, and what they do is they send people all around the world. They send them in, they come in, they evaluate, they come back, they, you know, obviously it's a, it's a bid thing, but. You can get anything done in about any time frame you want, depending on how much you want to pay. Hey, so yeah. I can tell you that. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there, are, there are limits, but I'll yeah. tell you, you know, it, I've, I've <laughs> Well, I mean, we're going to know. I mean, we were hoping to know before town meeting, but we're going to know in another month or so whether we get any commitment for USDA. And that's sort of why we're kind of up in the air. And, and because obviously three million to bucks is better than nothing, or, oh, or four million, or whatever we can get from them, plus a two percent loan. So that makes a huge. But if we don't have them, 
and we don't if that we don't pan if that doesn't pan out then we're we're starting all over again because we have to figure out what we can afford mm -hmm. and how we're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. So do we and even even once you have it, you guys want to spend the least amount of money, so you want to do it for the most right. economically as possible. Listen, I'll tell you right now, if you if you if you let us go after it, we'll probably save you enough money to build three senior centers. You know what I mean? And that's just that's just I'm hell, uh, well I, based based on any of these things. I mean, Kip can tell you on the roof, it was ridiculous, and we could have we probably could have built it ourselves for cheaper. But do. Um, so do we all want to take a crack at this and kind of come back with our options or, or send them, co compile them all to Diana for? Uh, I guess the only thing I do see in here that was in the last one that really is not in our purview, there isn't much for reports or anything else available is stormwater catch basins and cisterns uh, right. type of situations. I mean, yeah. that's that's a whole different mm -hmm. okay. look at. Okay. That's uh, Yeah. No, we just... D Diana just put this together. Right. And oh, this no, is no, the first no, time no, 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 we saw it. Yeah. But yeah. what yeah. we like wanted to do primary, was to primary, have you focus uh, on, we've primary, already made the yeah. decision primary. that we're going to focus on South Deerfield. So we yeah. need okay, you fine. to look at South Deerfield. Fine. Old Deerfield is on hold just yeah. because we can't afford to do both because right. we can hardly, if we barely can afford this. And we're hoping some other options will open up for old, Deer, <laughs> old Deerfield. Whether we do piping up to Greenfield or whatever, I mean, I'm not sure anything is going to is going to happen before the you know yeah. mayor changes over and so. and then I got to establish a whole nother relationship. But if Mayor Martin thought that we could Greenfield could save money and in the upgrade because it was attractive that we were joining on and then they would get somebody that would pay more, our users would pay more. He was very happy to take on all the nonprofits. He would just send oh, no. them a bill. Nervous about happy. that plan, but <laughs> but I just don't want to be beholden to another town. But I, I know. Uh, but I know what I know. you're saying. But yeah. it, well, look, it, it's worth looking at. But it's it would have it would worked out cheaper in the long run for the users to have the greenfield um, connection, it, even if they were paying a slightly higher rate or double the rate, it would still be cheaper than trying Build to, plan. to to do ten That's million dollars. That's something down the road, though. Yes, like you say. That's South and, Deerfield, and what's stay focused right. yep. on that? Yep. 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 I, I don't think you need to limit it to a certain scope of work. We just serve at your pleasure, and when you want us to look at something, you, you, you send it our way and we go, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that, that's the whole point. Is, this is just an outline. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. that's yep. that's so, you know, you don't need to limit it to just today, tomorrow, whatever. You can just say, as we go, this is what we need next, this is what we need next. You just okay. one task at a time. Well, I think we've made the decision about South Deerfield, so that would be what our charge okay. is to have you right. relate so we'll to that. we'll funnel this. To Diana, and um, if you have stuff you want to funnel to her, and then we'll just get a not a draft one together. We can vote on maybe our, our next select board meeting on that. Um, but we, why? I don't see why we can't just vote on it um, for next Tuesday. Well, that's what. Yeah, our yeah. next our next meeting, yeah. we'll get together and have enough you know we, feedback from re from the group. It. Absolutely, and, and then we could get just them get it done because I don't see this as a big deal. Yep, we just that's need perfect. you to move ahead. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, so review the town alert system and discuss possible changes. This is the uh, rave. Well, the rave no. is half half yeah. the cost, and um, of, and it's, it's it has more options than the code red, and so that made sense to change over from an operational budget point of view because we'd save, um, uh, you know, half of our. I think it's six thousand dollars. So we'd, we we'd pay six thousand a year for the no, code no, red. No, right now we pay. Well, actually, I that four thousand eight hundred. Is well, we we signed a contract for four thousand eight hundred. I think that's what we're still paying. Yeah, I don't but think it's the, increased. I and, and oh, I thought it was six thousand. What's last the time rave? We budgeted, but well, it and then five, rave seven. is three thousand. Okay. Maybe starting with rave is three thousand. Well, we're going to save money. Is it regardless. the same same service? It's like a phone type. Call oh, out. yes, okay. it's a call out, but yeah. we, we have more options. Okay. Um, the contract that you're looking at, Diana, is from, was the original contract. That yeah, that was the only, right. right. That was the only one we that's saw. Why that's I the only say one we I have, think, though. So I, I think that we're still, I think that's still what we're paying. Well, um, I don't know. I think it was 6000 But anyway, we're still saving money. Okay. By yeah. considerable, and that, so that cuts our operating budget for no other reason. We have more options, and better as, service. And I know Chiefs looked at this and Lori's looked at this and they're on, they're in favor of changing from code rate. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. The Deerfield Academy uses RAVE already. Um, okay. A couple other people that John, you know, our chief and Lori both had um, called up 
Oh, Greenfield has either, or anyway, there's a few towns that have already switched over. Mm -hmm. um, it's cheaper, obviously, but also you have more options to do things. And um, will it still do? It says mobile safety. Does it? Will it still do landlines for the? Oh residents? yeah, no, it, still, it okay. automatically loads up landlines. But the reason we put it into the MVP grant is because we're using it based on safety. Mm -hmm. But because cell phones have to be manually, people have to manually right. sign because up for cell phones. Right, because you don't know where they're going to be. And, right. and of course, most people use cell phones now. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't even have landlines anymore. So uh, for okay. us, okay. So, it's good. a huge... Why don't you make a motion? We'll move on. OK. Yeah. I make a motion to I'll second the um, motion. switch our code from code red to rave. Yep. So right. I second that motion. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing no. none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Do we have anything to sign here, Diana? Or? Um, I guess the back of the contract. Um, the only thing I'm looking at, I'm sorry, I was just looking at this. This is a, a population of 4,000. I don't know if that, how they, is that how they, if they base the price on that. Right. Um, is, well, what is it is. Correct? Um, 4,000 maybe users. People? Users? Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure if that's what they were getting um, at. 4,000 We have users. 36 households. Oh, 36. Right. Okay, 3, I get you. 3,600 households. That's right. It's not going to be residents. So it's going to be households. What, what you do sure. is you, um, you, you do your households plus then you have, I, I think the reason we upped it to 4,000 is because sometimes you have um, users from other outside the town that want to sign up. Okay. Yep. And, you, you, and can, you can see they're going to load the client for landline clients once a year okay. too. Great. I think Diana, like if you can have a police chief from another town on, and, mm -hmm. and you can have selected per, extra persons. Yeah. On. That's so good. that's why it was bumped from our thirty-six hundred to four thousand. To yeah, four thousand. That makes sense. Good. We just needed to. Um, you have to put in a number. Whatever the number is, it's not really that important. Um, because I think it's based on under 5,000 oh, okay. households or something is the first tier. It's the 17th. Okay. Do we need to do anything with the Channing B? No, I just wanted to, to get the letters since I did send it to you. Normally what happens is they will reach out to the town and they'll, um, they work with the um, Division of Unemployment and Training and they usually will communicate with, the, Great. with myself Trevor, did and you set up meetings. And have any I, didn't, up? I didn't talk with her that day because I just was in the Berkshires with limited cell service, yeah, but I, I, I did what? want I was, to discuss with her too, again. And, and then when I saw too, this so stuff come through, Natalie Blaze and, Natalie Blaze and, and Joe Comerford wanted gonna, to try and offer some help. And um, I think seeing that this is, yeah. Well, it, well reuse, reuse of the building, you know, there's different state. And I didn't realize help. they had a buyer already. So uh, I'm curious, you know, how that's laying out or who's interested in purchasing the property. And I'm glad that they, I'm so sad that Channing B is closing. And I want to too. thank them for all the years of, they you know, wonderful help neighbors. to the town and providing employees and running beautiful a wonderful business neighbors. and keeping a beautiful building and property and letting us use um, their soccer, Athletic their field, field for soccer oh, and God. donating land for our, for I mean, they've EMS done so building. much for the community over the years. And I'm so thankful and I'm heartbroken that they're leaving. And, but I'm, I'm grateful that they're leaving in a responsible manner and with enough time and notice and help that they've, you know, they've, when they go out, they went out well, and I'm, I'm just sad that they're leaving. But I, I just want to thank, um, you know, uh, the president, Mike Beat, and everybody um, that has that has Absolutely. communicated as best they can. And I'm sorry that, you know, I'm sorry to see that that's this is the future of you know, the technology takes jobs and it creates jobs, and it's very difficult to see this one go. And um, I know they tried hard to move into a thing, um, you know, online presence, but it's. It's difficult when you lose a big contract like that. So I'm, I'm glad they're working on it. I would still keep in touch with Joe Comerford and Natalie. If there's anything we can do to help uh, the, the company or the residents, we'd love to know about it. Maybe, do you mind sending her them an email then and I just will. say, well, mm -hmm. we're sorry that it worked out because I didn't have cell coverage on Route 2 when yep. I was coming back I will. Either, I'll so. definitely keep in touch. I, I never called them I'm back. I'm going to see Natalie tomorrow night. So. Yeah. Oh, that would be wonderful. Thank yep. you, Trevor. Sure. Just saying, I did reach out to Joe Beat and spoke with him. Oh, Joe, I don't know, Mike. Mike. And, uh, you know, told him if there's anything that we could do that would help. He did uh, inform me that they were trying hard to 
get someone else to buy off parts of their business so they would someone else would continue to do the work that they did. It just wouldn't be under the, the beat name. Gotcha. Um, oh, that's so, good to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. Oh, that's good. Yep. Uh, the town administrator's report is the next one. Yeah. Diana, um, you have nothing for us so we can go home? I don't. I don't really. <laughs> I don't okay. have much. Um, good. Thank I have you. A, I have a Thank quick um, statement I, or uh, topic I would like to bring up. Um, last meeting, um, I mistakenly had had mentioned something about Sunderland's finances as it related to their school. I was under the impression that Sunderland was not um, funding their schools at the level required. Um, I know they, they struggle every year, uh, or not every year, many years, we all struggle with school funding. It's very expensive educating and the dynamics of every town is very different. And I think um, when, when Carol and I were talking about that uh, and discussing it, I was, um, I was wrong in, in the statement that I said and I think I, I, I know I've hurt the feelings of some in Sunderland and I want to express um, my heartfelt apologies for that and that I didn't, um, I never mean to say anything derogatory or mean and oh, I'm no, not no. pointing fingers or anything. We all go through battles of finance. I, actually, we were actually in the context of talking about we were stressed out because the new formula, nobody knows about this new school formula, and I think we are the ones that are going to have prob huge problems, and, and I hope no uh, one's talking about it, and tomorrow, that was what we were talking about. Tomorrow night, um, I've been invited to talk uh, with the, um, or meet at a meeting with the joint chairs on education. Um, they will be at the collaborative for, for a meeting, and, and Natalie invited me to come, so I'm hoping to get a little bit more information on that. that? Um, it was in, um, I, 4.30, I think it was. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to go and speak with them and hopefully, you know, voice our concerns. But I just really wanted to get back to that. I was, um, I learn every day in this job and sometimes you step in a hole and sometimes you do really well. And um, last meeting I stepped in a hole and I was completely unaware and then it was brought to my attention. I just want to apologize to um, the select board finance uh, committee, school committee of Sunderland and the residents of Sunderland for the way I spoke. and. Um, in my ignorance, and uh, I hope they accept my apology. So I hope so too, because we had no intention, and we were really just talking about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, but you get it wrong I sometimes, know, and know. when you do, you I apologize. Know. So I hope and they accept I, that. I hope they Thank do you. accept our apology. All right, can we skip everything else and go home tonight? <laughs> I just wanted to mention Thanks. I did send out a notice that um, well you're going to meet next week so I'll bring it up again but I think on Earth Day you were invited to a tree planting ceremony from I pass that along because you have a um, you, we have an, an application in for a tree grant which we haven't heard of I did communicate with uh, the Forester and Amherst and they're ready to announce that any time now um, but a ahead of that they'd already planned to do these tree plantings I believe I, I have that, a so. um, all day retreat from 10 to 4. And that's um, the 22nd, right? I think it's... Earth Day is usually... Yes. Well, yeah. yes, it is. Yep. I think it's either the 22nd I, we have, or the We have a MAPCO it's all day. The 22nd. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. I have a Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition all day meeting from 10 to 4. Morning? I think it was a weekend. I feel like it was the oh, following maybe it was, Saturday. Oh, I feel okay. Like it was oh, the was it Saturday? Saturday? I thought it was like Monday. If no, I could it's, they, they're doing it in celebration of Earth Day, but I believe it was the, I want to say it was the 26th. Isn't okay. that Saturday? So I'll look really? back at yeah. that. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they were going to do it in the morning and then they were going to do another Earth thing. Day. Yeah, I sent you an, I sent you the email. But okay. I'll, I'll, I'll look back at I guess I saw the Earth Day and I was like, oh my God, I already have an all day meeting and I'm, you know, there's nothing to do. No, I'm pretty sure it's a weekend, so. Well, okay. in, in, in the spirit of Earth Day, I want everybody to know that I reduced my carbon footprint today and I will for the rest of the week by 80% by driving my Prius every day instead of my pickup truck. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank great. you very much. That's really nice. Because your pickup truck's in the shop. Carolyn's <laughs> in the barn. Carolyn? <laughs> Just kidding. And Listen, any, any new, I'm hustling any new money all yeah, yeah, the day. I'm yeah. going to be all day and Monday on Earth Day trying hole. to get money. Actually, <laughs> a hole, actually I, think I'm, I think I'm going to buy an all-electric car, Carolyn, so I will sell you my used Prius at a very oh. low price. <laughs> oh, no. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have a motion uh, to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Wait, wait, wait what? No. Wait, oh, what? what? Um, I just so want to make sure more... we're all set for May 1st um, for the vaping. Um, are we I don't do vape. I'm, I'm not vaping either. I don't vape. Are we, are we going to look at the vaping again? You haven't heard from some I of the... I haven't heard from uh, DJ. Okay, we we follow follow please make sure because I really want us to make a decision on the vaping stuff. 
Okay. What we need are to make sure that we eliminate yep. the potential for kids to have vaping in Deerfield. Right. Just make um, a bylaw says you can't vape in Deerfield. Well, because we, we want to know whether we do the Somerville version or the Providence version. And I, so can you follow yep, up with DJ? I will. I will um, and the other, other thing is we need to really, um, have you had a chance to look at the t tattoo regulations? Because I just want to adapt, adopt them if that's okay. I need, to, I need to take some time, but okay. I have not read them yet. All right. If you could, guys, could just look at it like May 1st. Over. We, we can adjust them at any point. We just, as a Board of Health, need to adopt them, and we need to adopt tattoo <coughs> policies. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So motion seconded. Somebody made a motion to adjourn? Yes. yes. Oh, seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all.